One day, in a faraway Murim, two beautiful ladies were holding their way to town, and on the way they met a guy. The girls stopped him and called him brother. They asked him how do they get into the blue heart. But then the guy discovered his app, which is where his skills come from. And he chose another bonus option to help the girls. The guy said it was the road ahead, arriving at a sheep-like rock, and in half an hour they would be there. And then the girls listened to him attentively, and were glad that he had helped them. And they wished to see him soon. The guy smiled and said that once you understand how the system works, it's very easy to use. This guy's name is Jian and he is a disciple of the contemplation sect in this mysterious world. As a time traveler, having a system is the standard. But no matter how good the system is, you need to know how to use it. For example, he almost fell into a trap in the beginning, so he traveled back five years. But that was wrong. He time traveled three days ago. Why doesn't he have a system yet? And then an angry woman came in and asked him what he was muttering about when she was still telling him to mop the floors. The man said to Jin, does he want to eat and drink for free in his house? After all, he has a dog to watch the house. Jiang said that he was born to be the main character. From today, he wouldn't stay with them anymore. And sent them away. Jiang threw everything on the floor and walked next to the house owners. He was so angry with them that he didn't even say goodbye. As he walked out into the courtyard, he wondered where he should go. Undecided, he sat down next to the counter and then hunger came over him. A man passed by Jiang and handed him a piece of bun, telling him to eat. Jiang took the food and thanked the Taoist master. Master said to Jian, Does Jiang know why exactly he fed him when there are so many underfed children on the street? Master said because he sees that he has amazing bones, and he has a good talent for martial arts, and in less than three years, he would be the best of the Li Hu sect's younger generation and then a system appeared in front of him. Jiang said that joint bonuses are great, and the old man patron and the system in one person. Just then, Jiang kneeled down and told the master to accept him as his disciple. For him, the system would issue a reward. In the form of a fire body, Xian would be of great use to him in the Lihu sect. It was obvious that the system was specifically tailoring the rewards for him. The second weapon option is certainly good for him but right now it's more important for him to have a practice technique. Master told Jian that he could become his disciple, but first he must pass a test. Jiang said that he would definitely try to pass it. The master agreed and told him to follow him, but then Jiang also realized that the system doesn't immediately give rewards. It just starts the task? It doesn't matter, there's still a system, it's not a big deal. And then the master brought him and told Jian that this place was called Ling Mao Peak and this was where he would be trained. Jiang told the master to make sure the guy wouldn't let him down. The master told him that cultivation and perseverance and or mining was the best way. By displaying these two traits, he would show perseverance and pass the test. Jiang told the master that he would try his best. The master told him that if he passed the mountain keeper test, he would come to accept him into the sect. Then a guy came and told Jian to go with him. After one day, Jiang stayed in the cave and chopped rocks. He said he couldn't do it anymore. He was too tired. But then the teacher came and said to Jian, who gave him permission to take a break, he still wants to take the test, doesn't he? Does he want to join the sect? Jiang said that he is worthless. He will make it up to the master. He is sorry. He really can no longer dig. The teacher punched him and told him that the first few people who came had struggled for months to join SECU. Apparently he had wasted his money. And then Jiang asked him, what did this teacher say? The teacher told him that uselessness. He really thinks he's some kind of genius. The teacher told him to listen to him. Jiang piece of shit, dig. And if he doesn't dig, he'll kill him, got it? And then the system showed him and Jiang said that he realized if the rewards of the first option were too hard to fulfill, then he would do the second option. The master began to hit him and told him to get up immediately. But Jiang was exhausted and lay on the ground. But then Jiang realized that he would be killed if he continued like this. Jiang said he's choosing the third option. He's not resisting. Jiang got to his feet and said he was going to dig. The teacher said the kid still has strength but let him keep digging. And then the system popped up again and gave him a plus to his physique. Jiang began to feel his strength recovering. In a moment, Jiang smiled and realized something and was overjoyed. He had learned how this system worked. The guy told Jian that he took the job. If he slacks off again, he'll kick his ass. 
Jiang said he would work, but Jiang realized that although the system didn't give him an advantage, he was tricked into digging for black coal in the mine again. But now that he understands how to use the system, he can avoid danger just fine. It's time for him to go. But then a guy came up to him and asked if he wanted to run away with him. And then Jiang saw that the third option had come to him himself. However, Rang Huang's reward should be considered lower, so perhaps it wasn't as dangerous. So he decided to give it a try. Jiang asked the guy what his palin was like. The guy waved at him and told him to follow him. Sitting down with a group of guys at a table, one of them asked how the dig was going. And then one of the guys said that another half a month and he should be ready. The guy said the watch is beefed up these days, so they'd have to wait for the overseer to get drunk before they could escape. But then Jiang saw that all his three choices had converged. Yes, this was certain death. He had absolutely no use for them. The guy asked Jian, what are his plans? Jiang said there is no need to hurry. It's better to rest first and he goes to sleep now. Four months later, the teacher shouted that this is what happens to those who try to escape, and told everyone to get to work. Jiang saw that his system wasn't wrong. It wasn't so much helping him grow as warning him to avoid disaster. But then out of nowhere, there was an explosion on this mountain, and the system immediately revealed to Jian that he saw that it was acting strangely somehow. The guy told everyone not to make a mess, but to go with him to the fire. Jiang said he trusts the system. It's just that he'll listen this time and choose the third option. Just then, a teacher came upon him, and he was holding a sword. He said to Jian, how dare he try to escape? But then the teacher attacked him, hoping to kill the guy. Jiang said, did the system really trick him this time? And then Jiang covered his face with his hand and said that his life was over. But he didn't expect a guy to come to his rescue. The guy asked Jian, is he okay? And then the system opened up to him and Jiang told the great warrior to save him. Voin said he would take the guy down the mountain. But he saw that Jiang wasn't afraid of him even after he had killed someone in front of him. Warrior asked the boy where his home was. Jiang said he had no home, he had been tricked into digging here, and now he had nowhere to go. The warrior asked him, why doesn't he come back with him to his sect? Jinya asked if he really could, and he said yes. Arriving at the warrior's sect congratulated Jiang, on passing the qualification test, after that, when he mastered the sword technique, Jiam would be able to become a full-fledged disciple and be allowed to worship the sect. Jiang said that he would study well, and then arriving at his room, Jiang opened the sheet and said that this was the way to practice. In a moment he was surprised at the sensation, and did not understand how it was possible. Waking up, Jiam was very happy that he had learned so easily. And now, all he had to do was report it. Jiang opened the system and was surprised at what he saw and thought it was dangerous. Is initiative punishable? So he decided to take the third option. Lying on the couch he thought, what do you mean? He has to lie low to be a wolf in sheep's clothing. And of course to be as calm as an old dog. Jiang decided that he must survive to enjoy the rewards of the system in the future. Jiang said that in this world, the one who was the strongest was the most powerful and could get anything he wanted. For five years now, he has been seriously practicing in the contemplation sect. With this system, he can become the strongest person on this continent. But such ambitious goals don't bother him right now. In the end, he must become stronger. The system jumps up at the slightest sign that he's the center of attention. That's fine, but he's got a life to live. Walking through the center of town, he saw a crowd of people. Where the guys got into an altercation and the man tells the guy that he knocked over his glass and he's just gonna leave? The guy told him, how can he blame him when it's obvious he's the one who dropped it himself? The man clenched his kalan and said, how dare the newcomer oppose him? Today he will be his teacher and teach him a lesson. Just then, Jiang heard this and broke into the pub. The man asked Jian, does he want to get into this? He advises him to mind his own business. The guy the man was beating up asked Jian why he didn't save him and then the system opened up in front of Jiang, and he started looking for options. Jiang of course didn't know if the speed he had just achieved was considered a fast pass. Jiang said it's all set. As for the young master, and the man told the guy that he would teach him a lesson today. Jiang asked the man, what lesson was he going to teach him? Elder. The guy was very scared and couldn't say a word. Jiang said that he saw an elder nearby, 
so why should he get involved? Jiang left it all on the side and went to lunch telling the waiter to bring a set lunch and tofu. The waiter already knew that this kid always ordered just cabbage, tofu, or white rice. Poor bastard. Jian said that there were a total of seven selections made today and several awards, which raised his skill level to a higher level. But it wouldn't be bad. If the skill points were interchangeable, he doesn't really understand the point of that skill like painting. Jian was sitting at the table thinking, when suddenly Brother Lu came up to him. And he asked him, Jian is here again dining alone. Lu told Jian that the pills he gave him last time helped him very well. Jian had only been in the clan for a few years, and he had already achieved such success in alchemy. How is that possible? Jian said it was all thanks to his brother who saved him from the mine, so he was glad he could help him now. Lu said that this result of Jian's efforts. In addition, he successfully completed all the trial tasks. Jian said that he was lucky that the trial tasks were not too difficult. Lu said that he always sees Jian walking around all day long, but his alchemy skills still improved quickly. Jian realized that although he wasn't practicing secretly, he was clearly cheating. But in this world, is it possible to live without cheating? Jian said that Lu guessed, honestly speaking, he is a stupid person in life, so he has to work secretly. Although Lu is very kind to him, he must not reveal the secret of his own system to anyone. After all, there is someone with a higher cultivation than him. Lu said that their sect didn't know much about his talent, and he joined the Blue Heart Hall. Even if he didn't sleep every day, he wouldn't be able to improve so quickly. Just then, Lu stood up and told Jiang that he knew his secret. In a moment, Jiang was surprised and couldn't say anything. Jiang made a fool of himself and asked Lu what he was talking about. Lu said that Jiang got his hands on something while he was in the mine, didn't he? But this something was not for cultivation, Lu said, but was meant for something else, more effective. Jiang said that it was very difficult to hide anything from his brother. Technically speaking, the system really does offer just possibilities. Lu said, why doesn't he direct Jiang to the Velvet Grass Hall? He would be able to climb to the top even faster than him. Lu said that knowing that Jiang was indifferent to fame and fortune, so he wouldn't advise him what he didn't like. But then Jiang saw that his system was completely silent, and not offering him any options. And now he was at a loss. And then Jiang went to the clan and a girl met him on the doorstep. She said that her name was Lu Zi from the Hall of the Water Mirror, and she pays her respects to Jiang's brother. Jiang froze and saw that she was so beautiful, she definitely carried a lot of trouble and danger. Jiang told her that she was mistaken, and his name was Wang. And then the girl was surprised and stood in a stupor. As Jian was leaving, a guy shouted to Jian and called out his name saying that Ching had asked him to find Jian to play two games of Go with him. And then the girl realized that this guy was really Zhang's brother. She asked the guy, is it Zhang's brother? The guy didn't hide it and said right. Jian realized that this guy was still too young to understand the full horror of such a beautiful girl. Jian turned around and said with a smile, he just decided to play a little joke on his sister. Jiang told the guy to tell Ching that he was about to go. Just then, the guy ran away from them. Jiang said he wondered why she had come to the hall to see him. The girl said that in three days, he would be descending the mountain for the first time and wanted to ask him to help with the test. And then a system came out in front of Jiang and after reading it he thought rang DG. How dangerous is that? Jiang apologized and said that he has been busy lately. This time Ching called him to play Go and this Litang is very bad at Go. The girl realized that she had been rejected. That's what it feels like. No one has rejected her since she was a little girl. This brother is so special. The girl told him not to leave. She hadn't finished talking yet. So she started running after him and shouted to Chio to stop him. Chio got angry and called Jian a jerk asking what he did to her sister Zichin. Jian said that as expected from a sister who could give a mid-rank award. Even talking to her is so difficult. Jiang told them to stop. It was all a misunderstanding. The girl told Chio not to be so rude. He didn't do anything to her. The girl said she apologizes for causing him trouble. But this trial is very important to her. That's why she asked for help. Jiang apologized and said that he had some important business recently and was very busy and couldn't help. The girl said to Jian that he uses such pathetic excuses. Is he really just afraid? And then the system opened up in front of Jiang again, and Jiang saw that she was another lower rank DG. And now he was finished. Jiang told her that is right, she said. 
Chio got angry and told her sister they should go. If he won't help them, they will find someone else. The girl told Chio that she shouldn't say that. She is too harsh. If someone refuses, they have their reasons. And then a guy came to them, and Chio recognized him, calling him Bart Kong. The guys thought, is it really him, from the water mirror hall? The guy said he was the one who single-handedly wiped out a rebel army three years ago to protect the people. A truly remarkable man. Kong said he greets them all from the Blue Heart Hall. His name is Kong Annan of the Water Mirror. Kong told Big Sister that they would be going on a trial in a couple days if they wanted to. And then Jiang decided he had to get away while everyone was distracted. Chio asked her sister where this guy had disappeared to. The girl told her brother that they had business to attend to. So they would talk to him another time. Kong stopped them and asked if they were going back to the hall. If so... He would guide them. Jiang hid in the bushes and said that is expected from a sister who can summon DG. She is truly terrifying. And then Z went home, and sitting in front of the house she played an instrument. Suddenly she was asked, who dared to bring her to such a state? And then she quickly left the instrument and greeted her teacher. The teacher said that she was getting better and better at playing the pipa. But since she plays it so well, her thoughts are very easy to read. Let her say who dared to offend the dearest student. Suskal is not. No one's bullying her. It's just that she met someone who made her be more considerate of people. The teacher asked who was this person. And then Z said she remembered that she hadn't done her homework for the day. The teacher realized that this is really rare. So she better check. She doesn't want her little girl to be cheated. The next morning, Jiang saw that first the younger sister came to see him. Now the older sister came. What a busy few days. And then Chio asked Jian where he was going. Jian said that he had unexpectedly found a way out of the deadlock, so he would like to go to the chess house. Chio said that he doesn't even blush when he lies. He has good psychological qualities. Does he know who she is? Jiang opened the system and decided that he was going to follow the herd and act like most students, not knowing much about the people of the outer halls but he never thought it would be the most dangerous option. Jiang said that he will sing that she is the guardian Yu of the Water Mirror Hall. He has long admired her. You thought that Jiang must be a student who likes to be modest. Therefore, he had to behave like most students. Yui said that was quite insightful, but she didn't remember seeing a disciple like him before. How does he know her? Jiang said that he had the honor of listening to the great guardian play the lute. The tiger doesn't growl when listening to her music. Yui said those were wonderful words. She never thought she would find a kindred spirit in this hall of blue heart. You asked? Jiang has been a registered disciple in this hall for five years? Jiang said correctly, this disciple has no cultivation talent. Yui told the guy to hold out his hand to him. And then Jiang as expected, she wants to test him. Reaching out, Yui saw that he was indeed at the fifth level of chi training. Usually, if someone could pass a sec test, even if they weren't the most talented, they would be able to reach the tenth level of chi training in a year. He has been in the contemplation sect for five years now, but he only has five levels of chi training, which is even worse than useless. Jiang realized that there was nothing they could do about it. His development was different from normal. The number of points served by the system is beyond the counting of this world. However, this makes it very easy for him to pretend to be a wolf, in sheep's clothing. Jiang told her, he was already very happy just to be a part of this sect. You said that's so sad. Obviously he was able to pass the test sets, but he's an absolute mediocrity. Yui said how much this boy had suffered in a sect where power and talent decided everything. No wonder he decided to run away when he saw her. He must have been through a lot and ended up being looked at with regret, which is why he's such a good strong boy. Yui asked if she could be told. How does he manage to make sure his siblings pass the test every time he becomes their iron seal? Jiang said that there is nothing more important than caution, and he always observes and thinks before making any decision, thus it prevents many troubles. Yui said Jiang said it well. That's what they really teach him in the trial, and he seems to have caught the gist of it. Jiang said he's just a little more careful. Yui said that it was also important to be strong inside, and as a sign of her trust in him, she decided to make him the iron seal of her favorite disciple. But then Jiang realized that this wasn't the right scenario. He had chosen the easiest third one, so why was he still in this asshole? For him to become an iron seal for Lu Zi was a DG rank reward. You asked him, doesn't he want to? And then Jiang opened the system and was surprised to realize that he was definitely finished. 
If he was an iron seal, option one means that if he refuses grace now, more problems are sure to arise later. And option two means that if he can clearly state his reasons, it's much better than just poo-pooing, but it's just as risky. And the DG rank level reward wasn't so much for how hard her ordeal was, but rather, if he had decided to help her yesterday. That Kong's brother would have come after him then. Jiang told you that of course not. It was just that the student was embarrassed by the unexpected favor. And then the system said that the assignment option was completed. And a plus award to phonetics. Yui said it was settled then. Have him wait for her at the door of the law enforcement hall in two days, in the morning. Two days later, Jiang arrived at the place as promised. And then you met him and shouted to him. Jiang bowed and greeted her. Yui said that he was just in time. He already knew her two favorite female students, didn't he? Jiang said yes, and greeted Sister Lu and Sister Fang. The girl thought that the teacher forcibly forced her brother to come here. Was she the one who gave him trouble? She realized that this was what it was like to worry about being hated by another person. It was really bad. The girl said that she was happy to meet Brother Jiang and apologized for causing him so much trouble this time. You told the others to come and greet their brother mentor. Jiang was surprised and dumbfounded, and then three other girls came running to him and said that they had come to see the mentor and would obey him. Jiang was ready to give up already. So much to his sister, he would definitely have a lot of problems with them and hassle. You told the others that it's big brother Jiang, so this time they should obey him. Is that clear to them? And then they all started introducing themselves one by one. All three of them were sisters and they were all from the same sect. Jiang was surprised and realized that they were all triplets, and the danger was unknown. He said that he would meet the three sisters once. You told Jian that she would bother him this time. They have many female disciples in the water mirror hall, and they need a reliable big brother. So if it's not too much trouble for him, have him take some more sisters with him and help them. Jiang said that he understood her and would fulfill her. The triplets immediately asked Jian, what kind of martial arts is he good at? And what kind of weapons does he usually like to use? Jiang told them all to be quiet and not to speak or move until he spoke. Immediately the triplets became all still and silent. Chiu asked, now Jiang agrees to accompany them? So why was he then afraid to accept that day? Jiang said that was then, but now is different. Since he became their escort, he is responsible for their safety. Chiu said, what happens if she doesn't want to? And then Jiang showed her the power and said she could try. Chiu was surprised, and it seemed strange to her. Where did he get that aura from? Is she really afraid of him? Jiang said that they would listen to him on his team and would never act rashly. Did they understand him? Jiang told them to go back and change into more normal cloth outfits. He would be waiting for them at this place in half an hour. Two points would be deducted for being late. Chiu said why should they be restricted in their freedom to dress? Did it have something to do with the assignment? Jian thought and said that first of all, in the future, if they want to say something, they should ask permission first, otherwise they will lose a point. Secondly, of course, it has to do with the mission. They're going on a mission, and they have to move stealthily and blend in with the crowd. Chiu thought and said isn't that cowardly? And it was necessary to reprimand in such a tone. The girl asked if she could only choose clothes made of coarse cloth or linen? Jiang said he was saying that he had to ask permission first. Didn't the girl realize that? She will be charged one point, and two if she doesn't remember it next time. The girl thought and realized, is this what it feels like to be reprimanded? Ever since she was a little girl, even her father hadn't disciplined her like this. It was so strange. Chiu said, why does she have such a temper? He can't believe how she even dared to talk to Sister Ziki like that. And then Jaya said for Jiang to let her speak. She asked if she could only choose clothes made of coarse cloth or linen. After all, she has neither, and she doesn't really want to borrow from strangers. Jiang said that the most important thing is for them to blend in with the crowd. And then the triplets raised their hands and asked Jiang for permission to speak. They asked if any style of coarse cloth would be suitable. Jiang told them to take turns asking next time, have them wear the clothes of the most common style. He has his billets about shoes and hats, so let them get to it. And then he sighed and said it was very difficult. Although beautiful girls are dangerous and difficult to lead, clothes should cover their eye-catching beauty. And then they all lined up and said they were done. And then Jiang realized what is called natural beauty. 
How could anyone hide such a thing? Jiang stood up and said that it was good that they all came back on time. And then he pointed to the rest of the clothes and said for them to put these on. Chiu said, what a horror. From now on, even if she is scolded by her teacher, she will never ask him to be a chaperone again. Jiang said, it's very hot right now. This is the anti-heat medicine he prepared for them have them put it on. The girls liked it, and were very happy. Jiang said that it was good that the concealment formation was working smoothly, and the aura was greatly weakened, and then the triplets all three of them asked permission to say something. Jiang pointed his finger, and said that she would speak first. The girl asked Jiang, what is this? Jiang said, haven't they seen it before? It's a cloth, for protection from the heat. The girl asked how would it work? Jiang saw that the lives of these ladies were indeed in a different dimension from that of ordinary, everyday people. Jiang said anyway, just let her put it on her face and she would figure it out for herself. The triplets all put these veils on their faces and said it was so cool and smelled so good on them. Ziki said, what is it really? While wearing it, you can feel a pleasant smell. And then she remembered that she had to ask permission to say. Jiang told her to speak up. The girl said for him to suggest, what is the smell of this cloth? Jiang took out a vial and said that it was his infusion of a hundred flowers, the fragrance of which helped refresh their minds. And then the girls were surprised and asked Jian, Can he make his own honey? Can he show them what this honey looks like? And then instead of words, Jiang coughed, and the triplets closed their mouths, for they realized that they hadn't asked permission. Jiang said this honey is a vascular and chi tonic, as well as a facial cosmetic. He said he would give the bottle to the one who could do the best job for them. And then the triplets were delighted at what they heard. Jiang said okay, and told them to now head to the control room to take their assignment for a test. Heading to the hall for a task, on the way someone shouted to his brother Bajran. And Bayran said hello to him. Chin asked Jian, had he come to fulfill the chaperone duties again? Jiang told the girls that it was Bart Chin, a very good and experienced master, who was in charge of conducting the trials and making sure the scoring was fair. The girls all gave him a friendly greeting. Chin thought, were these five sisters just standing behind their brother's back? The guy said his name was Chin from the Ten Thousand Swords Hall glad to meet all the sisters. Jiang told Chin that this time he was accompanying the five older sisters, so he asked to give them a test assignment. Chin said okay and told them to go with him. Chin said that in Ji village in Longshan Township, there have been several cases of child abduction recently. Anxiety hung over the village. Jiang took it and said this disciple understood everything. And then Ji Qi opened her veil in front of them and was so beautiful that they were surprised. Here Jiang and the girls made their way to Ji village, the village of luncheon. And passing through the town center, all the people were working and selling. And in the moment, one of the girls said to let Jiang tell her. Jiang said he would allow it. The girl said she wants to eat this pea bun. Jiang said okay. And how much does she want? In fact, the girl thought, and most of the time, Brother Jiang is quite reasonable, and said that a couple of them would be enough for her. Jiang asked, What about the others? Do they want it too? Chiu said she would love to try it. Jiang asked the proprietor how much a pea bun cost. The vendor said one coin a piece. Jiang said okay, and let the seller give him eight pieces. And then he held them out to the girls and they were surprised from such a delicious smell. Jiang said for her to take her time, they'll eat when they get to the inn, so cover your face back up. And then Chiu saw that there was a problem, and these people didn't notice them at all, so it must be Big Brother's merit. But then she thought, how did Jiang do it? Forget it, she doesn't like being stared at anyway, so she'll let him off the hook for now. The guys heard rumbling noises and a man was telling the guy how dare he set up a stall here without paying rent. Did he have enough to live for? The guy said the government wants to charge them rent, and they want to do that too. With such a small business, how will he be able to give them so much money? And then the man pushed him with his foot and said how dare he oppose him, and ordered everyone to beat him up, and then Chiu said they were going too far. Jiang told them how many times he should say that no one should move without his permission. Chiu told him that he was still a disciple of the contemplation sect. Isn't it their long time to fight for justice? Jiang said that their teacher entrusted them to him to teach them how to perform noble deeds and stand for justice on the Xianlong continent. Chiu said that she thought Jian just got scared. The girl told Chiu that they were new here and didn't have much experience, so it was better to listen to Big Brother first. Jiang said that they should go. This wasn't the best place to stay for long. 
Chio wasn't satisfied with that and got angry. The triplets were saying amongst themselves that Bart was different from the male students from before. He had absolutely no desire to prove himself. One of them said she doesn't know if he's really a wimp or if he's just really good at hiding. And that's very curious. And then they finally arrived at the hotel and Jiang asked the servant if there was any room left. And then the guy was surprised and didn't realize when these people had come. The guy said he was a little inattentive, but there are still plenty of places, heaven room, earth room, whatever your heart desires. And then Jiang opened the system and saw that there was a good harvest waiting for him here. It hadn't been long since they had entered the city and the options had already appeared twice. Jiang said he needed three people's rooms. So the guy showed them and walked them to the room. Jiang gave him a manuta and told the guy to tread. He would call him if he needed anything. The lad thanked him and told Sir to ring the bell. If they needed anything he would come right away. Jiang told the girls that now they can say whatever they want without asking his permission. The girl asked, aren't hotel rooms supposed to be big? Is this even a hotel room? Jiang asked if any of the sisters had ever gone out on their own. The girl said that her father didn't allow her to go out alone. Of the triplets, the girl said that they usually traveled in a carriage prepared by a servant, followed by a retinue of thirty or fifty people. Jiang said to them, then, would their family send experts to secretly protect them when they would descend the mountain this time? The girl said they shouldn't do that. She didn't tell her family she was leaving the mountain today. Jiang listened to them and was pleased. He suggested to them that they should eat the buns first. And then they were glad that they could take off their veils and eat properly. The girls all went to the table and started to eat. The girl told Chio to give it a try. Chio said she would not eat the buns bought by that cowardly brother. Jiang said to Sister Fang, To restore justice doesn't mean pull out your sword and kill those little brats. Chio said, Isn't doing noble deeds and standing up for justice is to see injustice on the way snatched the sword and rushed to the rescue. Jiang said, letting her let him ask whose people those little brats were. Was she thinking of defeating them in their territory and getting away in one piece? Chio said, that Jiang is talking nonsense. He's really just afraid of everything. She can answer for her actions. If someone wants to go against her, let them try. Jiang said that among the masters there are valiant people like her, Sister Fang but there are also evil ones who oppress the people and work for the tigers. He asked her what she would do. If they retaliated and found a master, or worse, a great master? Chio said she would fight. Jiang said, doesn't she first want to know who is behind those three people before she strikes? Chio covered her ears and said she didn't want to hear it. Jian seems like she already understands a bit, and all that's left is to wait, while she slowly accepts these facts. The next day, Jiang said that this is a rare opportunity to come down the mountain, system, work, and then Jiang was walking near the market and heard a man asking the owner if he could give him two fat pieces of meat. The vendor told Master Wu, the meat he asked for is ready, only 18 yen it costs. Wu said it's the same as always, he will eat it first, and pay him back at the end of the month. The vendor told Master Wu that he had said the same thing last month. Wu asked him, he that he trusted him? The vendor said he wouldn't dare do such a thing. He just said carelessly, have a nice day. And then Jiang looked at the system and said that he was choosing the third option. And praised his system. At that moment, the seller was thinking, how can he go on living? Then Jiang came over and told him to give him a kilogram of pork. The vendor got excited and asked what part of the meat he wanted. Jiang said neck meat and some pig ears would be good. The vendor said one portion of neck meat and one portion of pig ears. And then Jiang held out a bag of money to him. And then the seller said well, and told him to wait, for he must count. And then Jiang left. And opening the bag, the seller was surprised because Jiang had left him three qian in silver. He said it was strange. Usually he could memorize the faces of his customers. But how was it that he had forgotten the face of his benefactor? Could it be that he had met an immortal? Jiang realized that in this turbulent time, it was not easy to survive. Given the limitations of the system's capabilities, it was all he could do to help. Two hours later, Jiang came to the hotel and was saying that the system had triggered ten times today, quite a lot, and then it triggered once more, right in front of the hotel entrance. He was startled by Dizzy's middle rank. Wow, that's dangerous, Jiang said he was going for the third option. And when he went outside, he saw Chiyo and followed her. Jiang said that this girl is a real time bomb. 
It could lead to this girl conquering society for once. Chio walked next to the building and heard someone swearing. Someone was asking the guy not to do it. She would scream if he kept doing it. The guy told her to scream all she wanted. No one cared. The girl said he was a scoundrel and screamed for help. Chio yelled to the returnee to let the girl go. And in the moment, she pulled out her sword and said she was the bringer of justice. The guy ran off and told her to wait here. If she had the courage, he would come for her soon. And then the girl screamed and begged the gentleman not to leave. It was about money. Chio told the girl that she didn't have to thank her. She did what she had to do. The girl said to Chio, why should she thank her? Chio said that she didn't do anything wrong after all. Jian watched her and saw how she screwed up. Chio got angry and said she was kind enough to save her, and she turned around and scolded her. Jian said that even so, she had him pegged. And then she turned around and said, What is that smell, so pleasant? Chio was talking and denying it. She went out to handle their business. How could she be distracted by food? A woman in front of her tripped and twisted her leg. Chio walked over and asked Madam, Is she all right? The woman said that this old lady has a hard fate. Chio said it's okay. If there's anything she can do to help, let her tell her, and she'll do it. The woman asked who the girl was. She's not related to her. Why does she want to help her? Does she want to take her money? Chio asked. What is this woman talking about? Helping others this what people her age should do. So she offered to help her up. The woman said, that girl has a very kind heart. Chio asked her and how she was feeling. The woman said her sister-in-law wants her dead. Feeds her scraps like a pig every day. Leaves her sleeping alone in the woodpile at night when she knows she has trouble with her legs. She thinks her sister-in-law definitely wants her dead. Chio said, this is too much. How could such an evil person exist in the world? She will go home with her to help her demand explanations. The woman said no. Her sister-in-law is known as a cruel woman. Very cruel. Chio said not to worry. With this sword in her hands... Her sister-in-law won't be able to do anything to her. The woman said that it is good. The heavens must have opened their eyes to this old woman. But that is why they sent her such a good and kind girl. Jiang saw crying woman at night a common divorce. And there are people who do fall for it. And then Chiu started banging loudly and told the angry daughter-in-law to come out. The daughter-in-law said, What are they banging on about? It's like they want to kill someone in the middle of the night. Chiu said evil woman. Today she will seek justice for this grandmother. The girl said it was strange. She hadn't even noticed her when she first appeared. She also wondered why that old woman had given a secret signal. Just then, the woman beckoned to her sister-in-law. The girl asked Chio who she was. The matters between her and her mother are none of her business. Chio couldn't stand it and pulled out her sword and told her not to dare to be so mean. The girl asked her, how dare she pull out her sword? Let her chop her down if she dares. And then the neighbors woke up from such screams and said they couldn't sleep. The man apologized and said they would be right back. The man said to the girls, Can they talk inside? Let them not make people laugh outside. The woman said, Why don't they come in and talk? Chio said, Well, she originally wanted to be reasonable and didn't want to hurt people. Jian watched everything and saw that at another mysterious person, there are indeed many hidden dragons and tigers in this city. But how could such an insignificant gang of crooks have such a strong man in their ranks? Chio wondered what was happening to her. Suddenly, she felt weakness in her legs. But she remembered that when they felt suddenly weak, let them not use their last strength to escape. Chio fell on the floor and said she felt sick. But then a man came up and asked her, Is she going somewhere? And then she couldn't help herself and broke down the door. The man went outside and told the others to grab her alive. Chio pulled out her sword and attacked and told them to leave. The man said, Why is she still so strong even after incense? The guy said this girl is not that easy and told the man to get out of the way. And then one of the guys said boss Gu. Chio thought if she killed this guy, she would have a chance to escape. And then she attacked him with a sparkling white rainbow. But she didn't expect it to turn out like this and Gu managed to dodge her attack. And Gu also managed to attack and did so. Chio was very hurt and thought that she just wanted to help. Why did things work out this way for her? Jiang looked at the system and saw that the third option looked the hardest, but was always usually the best. We'd have to figure out a way. The guys were telling Boss Gu that he was able to take that little girl down with one punch. 
Gu said he just tackled some girl and ordered the others to tie her up. So a man came up to her holding a rope and tells Chiu that now he wants to see where she will run off to, and then Chiu started screaming for someone to come to her rescue. But in a moment, she closed her eyes as an explosion occurred. The man asked what's going on here, and who had the guts to do it right in front of his eyes. The guy was standing in the smoke saying he couldn't get the blade, and that magic is very strong against him. Gu said that he doesn't know which one of them is in charge here. He is Gu Lit's son, the head of the Yellow Gang and apologizes to them if he has offended them. But Gu received silence in response, and the smoke slowly began to dissipate. The guys asked Gu if he was okay, and then they saw that the little girl had disappeared. Gu told them all to shut up. They touched someone they shouldn't have. Fortunately, the senior out of respect for the yellow gang did nothing. Gu told everyone not to go out in the next two days, he would return to the gang to check and find out which sect experts had come to the city. Chiyo realized that she had been saved. In the end, that spineless Jiang had saved her. And then she wanted to say something to him. Jiang told her to be quiet and not to speak. She's under the influence of the incense. Take a nap. He'll cure her as soon as they get to a safe place. And then she realized, if she had listened to her older brother earlier, she wouldn't be in this position. So she apologized to him. Jiang brought her home and gave her medicine, during which she fell into a deep sleep. But at the moment of sleep, she started to scream loudly no, and woke up. The girl came up to her, and told her it was okay. Her sister was here, and she shouldn't be afraid of anything anymore. Chiyo hugged her sister tightly tightly and started crying. The girl hugged her too and tried to comfort her, telling her that everything was fine. Just then Jiang came in and asked, Chiyo woke up? The girl said yes, she just woke up. Jiang walked up to her and told her to give him her hand. Chiyo said, what's strange? Why didn't she notice before that her brother was so handsome? Jiang said, it looks like it's just ordinary incense without any other toxic substances. It is a soul-purifying elixir. Let her take it and rest. Chiyo told him that she was wrong. She shouldn't have let his words pass her ears and said that about him. Jiang told her that she didn't need to admit her guilt to him. Why did she think he showed up on time? In fact, he followed her as she left the inn, and the reason he didn't stop her was to make her gape with grief. Jiang said for her to take her medicine, and they would be on their way in two hours. Chiyo said to Sister Qin, Is she really that annoying? Qin asked her, Why would she? Her sister loves her more than anything in the world. Chiyo said that she really knows she was wrong, and of course Bart is right. It is indeed dangerous in these lands. She was clearly trying to help them but they caused her suffering. Chin said well, she learns from her mistakes. Let's let her take the medicine first. Chiyo said that her brother's medicine has such a refreshing fragrance and tastes much more pleasant. Chin said for her to rest and she would stay here with her. Chiyo thought, how strong is her elder brother? The person she met today at least has Xian's strength, but big brother easily saved her. Chiyo said that brother seems to know everything. He is really amazing. And yes, he is amazing. The next morning, Jiang gathered everyone and asked Chiyo, Did her weakness go away? Chiyo said no weakness. The medicine her brother gave her helped a lot. Jiang said as he left that it was time for them to go on their way. Suddenly, a familiar man walked by him, and Jiang noticed him. The boy said Master Chin is here or what? Chin said he was going to ask him something, but let him not spread about it. If anyone else finds out about it, he understands what will happen. Chen asked if there were any members of the clan with distinguished behavior who had recently stayed here. The guy said that he had only received six guests yesterday, all of whom wore straw hats and left this morning. Chen said for the guy to tell him what they look like. The guy said strangely, but Junior can't remember what they look like. Chen thought maybe some kind of formation was used. Chen asked the guy, did he remember anything else? Make him think hard or he'd kick his ass. The guy said that this master rewarded him with five coins. And then Chin stretched out his hand and asked, Where is the money? The guy put them in his hands and showed them. Chin asked him, Is he sure there are five here? The guy said sure, since he is rarely rewarded. Chin took one of them and said that these coins were very familiar to him. And he read where they came from and who they belonged to. Chinya said that she was clearly following the map. So why are they going wrong again? Just then Chiyo snatched the card and said that she would try it now. And then they both looked at the triplets. The girls told them not to look at them. They didn't understand either. After all, 
They usually don't even have to look at a map when they go outside even just for a walk. At this time Jian was sitting and resting. Chiu seeing this was surprised and was a little angry with him because he doesn't say anything. Jian told them that the rest of the journey was up to them, for reading a map and knowing the way was a necessary skill when they were out in the wilderness. Chiu asked the triplets, how about asking big brother? The girls said that brother would undoubtedly be rude to them again. After all, they had already asked many times. Chin said it would be better if she went to him. Chiu told her sister no. How can she let her brother scold her every time? Chin said it didn't matter. Wasn't that why they went out into the world? To try and learn something new? Chiu started to get indignant. But Chin told her to stop. Let her just wait for her here. Chin walked up to brother Jiang and before she could say a word, Jiang asked, they don't know where to go again. Chin said that it is very difficult to determine the direction when there are no official roads. Jiang said that in fact, the best way to read a map is to learn how to draw one. Chin asked, what is it like to draw a map? That is to understand how this map was drawn. It becomes clear where to go. Jiang said that this book should help them. Chin told him that she seemed to understand a little. Jiang said then they would go on and find the road. Finding her way Chiu was overjoyed and said that they were really in Jifu village and sister Qin is awesome. Qin was happy too and told her sister that it was her big brother who gave her this amazing book. Did Chiu ask for the book? What book? Qin pulled it out and showed it to them. The triplets said they would memorize the title and buy a copy to read when they returned. Qin realized that she wasn't quite sure what the girls were saying but the book was most likely written by the older brother. Chin asked her brother what should they do next. Jiang said they could say what they thought about it themselves. Chiu said to go to the village and ask around and find out how all those kids disappeared and find out when and where. Jiang started waving his head and realized that they were wrong and said that by doing so, they would only scare the snake away. Jiang said that given the frequent cases of children going missing from the village, it is likely that the culprit is still in business or even hiding in the village. And once they start asking, they're bound to expose themselves. And if word gets out about it, the perpetrator will naturally be much more careful. Chin said what brother says makes sense. But how can they investigate if they don't ask anyone? Jiang said there was no need to investigate. Just wait for the next crime. That night the perpetrator attacked one of the houses and by breaking the window of the house he got inside and stole a small child. At this time... The girls were awake and watching him. Chin said that they had indeed committed a crime again. Jiang said that they would go after him and follow him. After chasing him into the forest the guys stopped and Jiang said that the aura had disappeared. Chiu asked, why did it suddenly disappear? Jiang said that it looked like they were in formation, so let them be careful. Was it created by those thieves who steal children? One of the triplets asked. Jiang said that's right. That's why the thief was also able to run out of the formation easily. Chiu said that since the thief was able to escape, if they found the right way, they would be able to get out of the formation. Jiang said she was right, then they would split up and find him. Chiu saw that big brother can also compliment people. Jiang said for the triplets to be careful, this thief actually created a nine young formation hiding from the world. But it's not that big. And then there was an explosion and the girl closed in and started yelling to Jian that there was a trap there to kill her just now. Jian said it was fine and told them to just be careful, it wouldn't kill them. The girl said it was a very strong hidden weapon, a blow could kill her. The girl told her other sister to watch her every move, it's very dangerous here. Jian decided to test them, and blew discreetly into the pipe. Chiu was frightened and asked her big brother what was that sound. Jian said that he didn't know, they must be the souls of the dead. Have they ever heard a ghost ring a bell? That must be him. Chiu was frightened and kneeled down praying that the immeasurable heavenly respect would protect her. Jian was surprised that an ordinary ice girl like this, who would have thought that she was afraid of ghosts, Jian told Sister Fang that they had her as a coward before she acted so chivalrous, and now she was deflated. In a moment of searching, the girl asked her sister why she was coming from this side, the girl said she just kept walking forward. The girl said she had clearly chosen a different direction from theirs, as it happened then. The girl thought, what is this formation so strange? She suddenly felt so dizzy, and then the three sisters also said that they were not feeling well either. And in a moment they all lost consciousness and fell under a tree. Jiang said that although the formation wasn't very powerful, it was enough for a few sisters who hadn't reached a high enough cultivation yet. But it doesn't matter. 
he'll be able to destroy the formation soon anyway, so for now, just them laying around. Jian said that the beautiful virtue is slightly ajar, the fragrance of peace flows out from the dark spring of the beautiful, and the light of infinite spiritual treasures shines through. And then Jian used all his magic, and with his attack shouted loudly, Destroy! Jian found something on the ground and said, This thief is quite rich. Although it was a low-quality golden spiritual stone, but it wasn't something an ordinary person could afford, it even becomes interesting. Jian sees that Qin doesn't know how to fight the formation, but so far she has managed to stay conscious through sheer willpower. Jian approached her and told her to eat this. Qin wanted to refuse, but she kept silent and drank the pill. Qin said that this pill is so amazing, not only does it have a delicate flavor, but it also restores mental strength so quickly. Jiang told her to go and wake up Sister Fan, and he would go and look for the others and bring them here. Jiang found them and was surprised that these triplets even fell in the same pose. Just then, Jiang let them smell one fragrance. The triplets woke up abruptly and asked Jian, Did something happen? Jian said it was him, and told them to take the medicine first, and then one of the triplets asked permission to speak. Jiang saw that even in this situation, she didn't forget to ask permission. The girl asked Jian, was he the one who destroyed the formation? Jian said that he didn't know how formations were made, so he thought that she couldn't hold many people. And then the girls said that Bart Jian was taking them for fools. Jian asked them, are they okay? If yes, it's time to move on. Coming to one place, Jian said, it should be here. Those thieves inside won't compare to them, so do it. And then the girls all attacked the cave from where the light was visible. Suddenly they started screaming for the girls to spare them. The girl told her older brother that it was done. Jiang went inside and said that they had done a good job. Qin grabbed one and said he was the leader of this group. Jiang said okay and ordered the others to be tied up as well. The gang leader told Xian if he wanted to kill him, let him do it. Jiang said there was no hurry for them. The leader wondered what the man wanted. The guy said to Jian, if he caught him, let him send him to the government for a reward. Why is he sitting here? The guy said that since Jiang was able to pass through here, the formation outside was destroyed by him. Jiang said that usually when he questioned thieves, if he asked questions first, they usually kept their mouths shut. Jiang asked the guy, was he the one who set up this formation? But it really impressed him. The guy said that if it wasn't for the lack of material, he definitely wouldn't have been able to escape. Jiang said he was actually a little curious about that. Where did he learn that? The guy said, he won't say anything. The guy said to Jian, shouldn't he keep asking questions? Or make a deal with him? Jiang asked him, is he teaching him what to do? The guy said if he told him how he knew that, would Jiang let him go? Jiang said no, and he had little interest in such formations that couldn't even trap him. The guy said it's only because, he's not very good at this art. This formation is called minor aging, suppressing the soul. And then the guy mentioned a book, and Jiang asked what book? The guy said he dug it up when he was looting the tomb. It's very valuable. And then Qin came to them and told Jiang Yu that all the thieves were tied up. Jiang said okay, and told them to go. The guy told Jian Yu not to leave and revealed that the formations in the book were really powerful. If they don't believe him, he can show them. Jiang understood that this method was indeed tried and tested, of course, then it was human nature to rush and fight going backwards. Qin asked what they should do further escort them to the authorities? Jiang said for her not to bother, let her just go to the nearest town and report to the authorities. Jiang asked her, does she know where the city of Zibiai is? Qin said yes, because she had memorized it. Jiang saw that this girl clearly had a good memory. Why couldn't she memorize what he was teaching her? This is kind of weird. Jiang told the others to stay here and watch and he would soon return to the cave for them. Just then the children ran out of the cave and the girls were surprised. Jiang told them to watch them and not to let them go anywhere. The guy asked Jiang how he knew where they kept the kids. Jiang said, why should he tell him that? Guy thought, shouldn't a person brag about how smart they are when they hear a question like that? The guy said to Jiang, isn't he wondering where he sold the other kids to? Jiang said that the guy wanted to say he gave the children away, right? The guy asked Jian who he was anyway? Jian said he was a Wanla from the Contemplation sect. The guy said that since Jiang knew he was working for Su, why would he get involved? Jiang was surprised, and didn't expect his lie to work. And then a system popped up in front of him, and Jiang said special skill points. 
Reliable. I want it. Of course I want it. Chio asked her older brother. Who is Chio? Jiang said that they were demon-worshipping people. Chio asked that these children were sent to a demonic sect. Jiang said, does she really think that, according to her, people from the mechanical sect eat children three times a day? Chio asked, isn't that right? Why else would they kidnap children then? Jiang said, of course, to raise the next generation. If the families don't give them away, they take them away themselves. Many things in this world are not as simple as they seem, and these things cannot be so easily separated by simply using the words good and evil. Chio bowed and thanked him, saying that she had taken his instruction into consideration. Jiang asked, did Owen understand what he was trying to convey to her? Let her take her time in her training. Chio said, even though she is not very smart. Jiang said it's very good that she understands her shortcomings. Jiang saw that the system was very cruel. But how easy it was to get a point from this girl. The guy said that things in this world cannot be divided into good and evil. The brother really had an epiphany. Would the brother like to hear his story? Jiang said he wasn't interested. Let him save it for the courtroom. The guy said he didn't care. He would tell him now. And then the men came and took the thieves. The man said that this time the contemplation sect really did the people a favor. As a token of their appreciation, they set them a table for the heroines and asked them to do them a favor. Chio apologized and said they had urgent business to attend to, so they had to cancel. The security guy said it went by so fast that he didn't even have time to see their faces. And these figures are just beautiful indeed. The man told the others enough. They all look like bandits. Maybe they were the ones keeping people in fear? The man thought about Ms. Lu. He doesn't know when they will meet again. He just hopes they can see each other in their dreams tonight. Chin asked Chiyo, what's the rush? Chiyo told her sister, lest she blame her. Big brother told her to do it. Jiang told them not to mess with the guards, except for the case itself. They were no better than thieves. Chin said, how could guards not be different from thieves if they catch the strong and protect the weak? Jiang says they'll find out later. But anyway... Just do what he tells them. Jiang told the girls that they wouldn't stay at the inn today, but would camp here. The girl told them to put up a bigger tent. Okay. They can sleep together at night. An hour later, the girl was saying that she clearly remembered that the tent was set up that way. So why wasn't it holding up? Jean said that if this continues, they will really have to sleep on the ground at night. She will ask her elder brother's advice. The triplet said it's so unfair. Jean said it's okay. He's actually not that strict. The girl said no. This time she has to go. Chin tried to stop her. But the triplets told her to let her handle it herself. They would just wait for her here. Chin calmed down and accepted her decision. And she was sorry that she wouldn't be able to get guidance from her older brother. Jiang didn't waste any time and cooked a meal for everyone. The girls were happy and said it was delicious. And the brother was a master craftsman. Jiang said that if they get an opportunity in the future, he would teach them too. Now they should go to bed early and he'll be on watch. Chin said that it seemed like they had the tent pitched to them by their older brother. The triplets said he was good at everything. One asked, what did the others think? Was it brother who broke that formation yesterday or not? Chio said most likely. This formation was so strong, how could it collapse by itself? Chin asked, then how did their brother destroy it? Tiranishka said that big brother is a disciple of the Blue Heart Hall, right? Aren't those who teach formations from the Star Law Hall? Chin said, why don't you just go and ask him his face and sit here and guess together? Chin came out of the tent right in front of Jian Yan. He asked her why she was still awake and walking. Chin said that she couldn't sleep, so she decided to go out on duty with her brother as a practice for the future. Jian said since she wants to practice, she'll have to practice alone. It just so happens that he has some things to do, so he has to go. It seemed to Chin that her brother really disliked her. It's sad, but she even seems to like it when her brother is so cold to her. But then Jiang heard a strange sound in the forest, and all the girls jumped outside. Jiang told them to come with him to look. Xiao thought it was something of a surprise. Had Big Brother really volunteered to check what was going on? Going deep into the forest, Jiang came upon a battle of two groups. He said that only the third stage of qi training was the strongest. Jian told the girls to all go and break them up and he would help them with that if anything. Just then, one of the guys attacked and Qin stood in front of the sword. The guy asked her who she was. Qin said she was a disciple of the contemplative sect. And then the guy attacked and said it had nothing to do with the contemplation sect. 
so let them stay out of it. And so this is what the contemplation sex decision is. All right, they will remember this. Let them wait. And told the brothers to retreat. And then a girl came up to them and said that she was a goo from the Chinyu family, and thanked them for such help. But someone decided to take advantage of this and attack stealthily. But then Jiang came up and saved Qing from the blade. Jiang said that it was what was called a reverse dart. So have them watch out for that when they were throwing the opponent back. Qin thanked him for her rescue. She knew that if he didn't block that dart, it would have pierced her chest. Gu said Jiang has great skills, but she hadn't asked what his name was yet. Jiang said his first name is Wang and his last name is Lao. Gu said since brother Lao will repulse the brigand's attack, she thanks him. Jiang said they would postpone polite words, for her companion was wounded. The girl said no, it's fine. Jiang said he heard that Lan's technique is very effective in treating injuries. Could they enlighten him? The girl said that she was not a master of this art, and had not perfected Lan's technique, so she did not want to embarrass herself. Jiang said, well, what a bad memory the Lan technique is not a technique of the Qiyu clan, but of the Zhaotian sect. And then they were surprised that Jiang knew about it. Gu said that they didn't wish any harm, they really weren't sect disciples, but there are times when they are away from home as a couple. But Jiang interrupted her and said that she didn't need to explain it to him. Jiang said that he believed that this was a good place to stop. They had only recently met, and now that they were okay, they would be the first to leave. Gu said for him to wait for a moment. His real name is Li Fuqing, he is a disciple of the Xiuin cult. He's also the son of the cult master. Jiang stopped and realized that this was correct. A demonic cultist? On top of that, also the son of a sect master? Isn't the catch too big? Li said brother Wang is right. It is not honorable when people save their lives and they cheat them. The triplets asked their brother, what kind of cult is Xue in? Jiang said that it must be a demonic cult from Huainan. The triplets said they heard that all demonic cult members have three eyes and a mouth full of sharp teeth, and with such a long tongue. Jiang said that it's all just a folk legend. The people from the demonic cult are also human, and don't have three heads or six arms. Li told Brother Wang, he hopes he now understands his difficulties, and why he is trying to hide it. Jiang said he understands, but why did Brother Li come to Jiang Bei hiding his identity? Li said that he wasn't going to lie to him. As the son of a cult master, everyone had high hopes for him. But when he was ready to learn the inner teachings of the cult, he learned on inspection about his weak young body. Lu said that later his father became more and more frustrated with him, and his two brothers gradually distanced themselves from him. Jiang thought that this guy was born into a big family but without talent. His father is disappointed and his brothers think he is already buried. But there is a woman beside him who is willing to go with her master to the end. Jiang said so he went all the way to prove himself by building a career in a foreign country? Li said right. He's going to impress all those who look down on him. Jiang thought that from his point of view. It was fine if someone looked down on them. Shouldn't they be made to pay for it? Li said that now he can't even beat these village vagabonds. What kind of career building can we talk about? Jiang said he wondered, how did Brother Li and these thieves fight? The girl said that they were passing that day and saw some tramps bullying an old farmer, and they took action against them. Jiang said that Li was born in a demonic cult but open and responsive in his actions, a true model for a hero. Jiang told Brother Li that maybe his father isn't as indifferent as he really thinks. Unless of course he's wrong, this isn't the first time they've been attacked by thieves for helping others, right? Jiang asked him, was this the first time they had traveled this far? Li said yes, they were all brought up in the mountains, studying and rarely went out. Jiang said that they think that on their first trip they safely traveled all the way from Huainan to Jiangbei because... They are capable of it, not because they have someone to protect them. Li said it's the third uncle. He must be the one following them. Jiang asked, what other third uncle is there? Li said that he was the only person in the entire cult who was still kind to him. After learning that his cultivation was wasted, his father soon abandoned him, and only his third uncle continued to support him. He not only trained him every night, but also gave him many herbs. But unfortunately, he was too hopeless, and after studying for a long time, he never got results. Jiang asked, Who is this third uncle to him? Why does he treat him so well? Li said the third uncle is his father's brother. He watched him grow up. Since he was a baby, he always took care of him and his mother, who, to put it mildly, 
was dragged into this case because of him. But then Jiang confused and could not understand where he started. His father that the green cap does not crush his head? And then the system kicked in, and Jiang decided to take the option of ranking DG doesn't even fall off. Why is there such a huge gap? Jiang told Lu that it seems that his uncle is really a great and good man. Li said yes, he had not seen him for so long that he missed him very much. Jiang saw that his assignment had failed. Did the system mean to say that he suspected something about his uncle? Jiang said that in fact, like Lu, he can't really develop his body. But there is an uncle who has always taken care of him. Without him, he fears he would be dead. And of course fate always arranges for such a man to lead him. Anyway, all uncles are like that, so you shouldn't think too much about it. And luckily it's all over. The girl said that it's no wonder brother is so strong. But he's not famous in the sect. It's because he was born with a useless body and can't cultivate at all. Jiang realized that although he had gotten away with it, it looked like he had gotten his feet a little wet. Li said that it was no wonder he felt sympathy when he saw brother Wang. So they are in a similar situation. Can he call him big brother? Li asked. Jiang knew that this was what he expected from someone who had the template of a protagonist. A few phrases are enough to trigger options comparable to these beautiful sisters. Jiang told him that he couldn't let him call him big brother. They're just casual acquaintances, after all. And Jiang will give him one piece of advice. Don't trust someone you've just met, and when he doesn't even know his real name. The girls were frightened because the situation was getting heated. Li said that he would definitely remember this instruction. Jiang said that their meeting with him was clearly fate so he would give him one more piece of advice. You don't have to train to become stronger. Jiang gave him the book and told him to try reading it. Maybe it will inspire him. Since it's a template protagonist, and the system asked him to help him, and now he will leave behind a positive impression. In any case, sooner or later he will succeed. Li said that Brother Wang is a very strange person. The girl said that he said that was not his real name. Li said that a name is just a word to address a person. Let's go. First let's find a place to heal her wounds. As they left all the girls raised their hands with interest and wanted to ask. Jiang told them to take turns speaking. The triplets asked why they were here to rescue people from a demonic sect. And how did he determine that they weren't from a cult? Jiang said that was without comment. And then they suggested that they would massage his shoulders and someone would take care of his feet. Jiang got angry and said that he would count to three and downgrade anyone who made a scene again. Jiang said that before they go back, he wants them to memorize three rules. One, they can talk about everything they've learned, but don't talk about the people that Jiang had something to do with it. Two, don't recommend him to others. Third, after returning to the sect, they would each return to their own school and never see each other again unless something unforeseen happened. Jean thought that every time being under her elder brother's gaze was so scary, but it was also very pleasant. Jian also noticed that it wasn't bad either. His gaze attack with mental suppression was really working well. Jian said that of course he had no way of forcing them to obey. He just hoped that they respected each other well enough. Chio said that it turned out that in Big Brother's eyes, they were nothing more than acquaintances. But he's so cute. Jiang said that he hoped that they could memorize the above three rules. Back to the sect. When they came to the sect, Jiang told them to return all the things he had given them. The straw hat, straw shoes and veil. Jiang remembered and said that before he left, he said that he would give them a reward. This time they all did much better than he expected, especially Sister Lu. She has been a great captain all the way through and has been very positive when faced with a challenge which is a rare quality he hopes she can maintain. Chin took the gift and said then she respectfully thanked him, big brother. She thought it was strange, obviously she was being praised, but why wasn't she happy? Jiang said that he would go to the law and order hall alone, and they could go back. After that, the evaluation would be sent to their master, and he hoped they could stick to those three rules. The triplets asked, did the older brother really just leave like that? Once you learn these three rules, you can see why no one knows him in the cult, right? However, thought Chiu, whether they did or not, Big Brother would no longer have anything to do with them. She never thanked her brother properly. Chin said that Bart had recently said that they shouldn't interact with each other unless something happened in the future. But what if something did happen? Jiang came to Chin's brother and said that he came with a report. Chin said Buren came back. One minute. Jiang said that the mission was a success. 
and in the course of it, he learned something that he should report to his brother. Chin asked, what is it? Jiang said, what he figured out is that this disappearance of the children from the village is related to Su, and he thinks they might make their move in the near future. And then the system said mission accomplished. And control is in the air. He finally waited for another special skill, how hard it was to get them. Did Chin say that it was really Xiao? If so, then he will report it to the sect. Jian said then he would thank him for the favor. Jian realized that before the sect could intervene, he needed to get some more useful items. Jian said that special skills are really powerful. Just one point and his ability to control himself in the air becomes much stronger. And since that thief had told him that the secret book was in the back of the mountain, it would be disrespectful of him not to come. The humidity in this forest is quite high and the grass here is obviously much darker than elsewhere. This must be the path he most often took. Then a tiger crept up behind him and started growling. Jiang tried to chase it away and told it not to interfere with his search. But then the tiger got angry and attacked him. Jiang used his powers, and in a moment, the tiger turned into a pet. Jiang knew that normally a tiger should sneak up from behind and wait for an opportunity to attack. But this one seemed a bit stupid. Maybe someone had raised him? Jiang ordered him to lie down, for he had something to learn from him. Immediately, the tiger obeyed him. Jiang asked the tiger, Are the things located here? The tiger remained silent and pointed with his paw. Jiang petted it in return and said good job. Just then, a system popped up in front of him and Jiang knew it. It's true what they say, it's better to underestimate any cultivator. But now I can see why he told him so easily. He wanted to trap him. You'll have to be more careful in the future. And he saw a swamp and used his potion. In the swamp was a black meteoric scalapendra. Grabbing it, Jiang was surprised, and no one would have thought that he would find such an exclusive trophy here. The system immediately gave him points. Jiang said that since the task was over, it meant there were no more dangers great. Opening the box he saw the stones, water heart formations. He thought, is it really so profitable to work as a pawn of a demonic cult right now? Well, they were the enemy, now they're his. It looks like something is written but nothing is clear, he will have to go back and calmly start to sort it all out to understand it properly. Jiang closed the book and asked the tiger if he should kill it so it wouldn't give anything away. Just then, the tiger started growling loudly. Jiang came to the sect and spoke, that after trying to understand the water heart formations all night last night, he forgot to go and pay his respects in front of the head of the Ching Hall. Coming to the sect, Jiang told the head of the Ching Hall that the disciple had returned. Immediately, the door opened and he was dragged into the room. The head told Jian to sit down. After all, they hadn't played with him in two days. His hands were already itching to play. Jiang said then he would take the black stones first and ask the head of the hall to be merciful. And then the head stopped him and said that today he would play with black stones. Jiang understood that just as it was said, taking the black stones was a sign of respect. Why did he take the initiative to take the black stones first? At the moment of the game... The hall head was already seething with anger. Jiang said, it seemed like the hall head had come to a new understanding. In that case, let's get started. Jiang said that the ghost stones on the board are real treasures, and even when someone plays against each other, their minds remain clear. Head Chin said that Byron knows his business. This is indeed an excellent treasure. Jiang knew that even such treasures could only be considered extremely good but not reaching the rank of Tian or D. Jiang said that when he first acquired the system, Huang ranked treasures were on the list, so it wasn't surprising that the task was terribly difficult. Now that he thinks about it, it's really regrettable. The system didn't even say anything, so cruel. Ching said that Bayran had been a registered student for five years, without a teacher. Jiang told the head of the audience that he knows he has no talent for Go and it's just enough for him to play it cool like this. But although it's the fastest the system doesn't give, he learned about the 24 halls of the Contemplation sect when he first joined the sect, and the Blue Heart Hall, where Go is played, caught his fancy the most. Just then, Jiang asked Cheng, is it again? Cultivation at this time is so dangerous? But he saw on the board that there are no options. It doesn't matter if he wins or loses. The system just doesn't want him to practice. Ching said that he understood the guy, and it was a pity since he was so smart. Jiang knew that he had entered the Blue Heart Hall because of his level of Go playing, but since he couldn't improve, 
he hadn't managed to find a master. At this point Ching started laughing and asked Jiang what's next? Jiang said that there are fifty white stones and there are sixteen scattered black stones on the board, totaling sixty-six. Ching said he was able to hold seventeen out of twenty-seven in his hand, while Jian lacked the determination to do something. Jiang said that he thought he could fend off his attack with a reset and use stance. Although he couldn't save the dragon, he caught it off guard with his increased pace. This was really powerful. Ching said it's fun to play go with him. He understands where he loses, unlike the other goons. Jiang said that although the disciple knows where he lost, he doesn't know how to solve the problem, so he hopes the head of the hall will give him some advice. Cheng suggested him to play again. Here came the evening and they were still playing. Jiang said that this instruction of the head of the hall was so diverse that it took his breath away. He asked the head of the hall to let him have privacy for a month to study it in detail. Ching says okay, he gives his consent to this. Jiang thanked him and realized that this would give him plenty of time to study his newfound treasure. Cheng asked the guy, another game? Cheng thanked him for his training. And then someone asked Liangji, is Baryan with him? Jiang couldn't believe it. But he guessed that someone would be looking for him today. He didn't expect it to be the hall master himself. Head Ching said that this guy is playing against him. The girl said then she enters the room. Jiang stood up and said that he was paying his respects to the hall master. The girl told him to take a break and went along with her. Jiang supposed about the unwritten rules of the Blue Heart Hall. As long as it was not about the life and death of a person, the game party should be finished. What was the big deal? Cheng asked the guy. Did he commit a crime? Jiang asked, how could that be? He was always honest. How could he do something wrong? The girl said there was no need to be nervous. Let him just go with her. Jiang told the hall master that he only now realized the subtlety of playing with the head of the hall, and the head gave him a month's grace period. The master told him to go with her, and not to distract her with such talk. Otherwise, he could not get any favors from her in the future. And then Jiang saw in the system that he was swizzed, Looks like the hall master is serious this time. Jiang told the head of the hall that he would go with the hall master first then. Ching gave him the okay and sent him off. The master told you that he brought the person she asked for to her. You said that she had to bother master Zhang. Zhang said, what other worries? Yuya is exaggerating too much. Why is you still standing? If this becomes known, people will laugh at him. Zhang, for not knowing how to treat guests. Jiang didn't understand how one could be such a sycophant. Where are the elegant and gallant masters of Zhang Hall? From the star sword in his heart. Master said to Jian, Why doesn't he go and worship? Why is he standing there? Jian realized that the master wouldn't be able to get a girl like this. Jian came over and said Jiang's disciple Bayeran is paying his respects. You said to Bayeran, He hid in the blue heart as soon as he came back. Could it be that he is hiding from her? Jiang said it's like this. It's rude of course, but what can he do? He's still helpless. The master didn't like this and asked Bayran what he had said. Was he ready for further consequences? The master told you, it's his fault that he is not strict in his discipline, so he doesn't respect others. You said she wondered if Hall Master John could let her talk to him privately. The master said that of course she could. As he left, he told Jian not to dare to speak like that again or he would be punished according to the rules. Yui said that the girls told her about everything that happened on their journey, and they did a great job. Jiang thanked her for the praise. You said that he rejected her so firmly. Is he afraid that she will force him into the path of cultivation? Jiang tried to say something, but you interrupted him and said that of course she understood. His maturity far exceeds his years. She appreciates that a man has ideals and noble outlooks on life and that he stands firmly on the path he has chosen. Let Jiang not be afraid, she won't force her ideas on her anymore. Jiang thought what the hell, these girls were talking about him. Jiang thanked her, for understanding. Those words would be engraved on his heart. You wished him good luck, and decided to leave. Jiang was surprised that it ended rather abruptly. But he felt relieved that she wouldn't pester anymore. You left saying that she had to bother Hall Master Jiang today. Master said she was too kind. So she talked to Bayran? Yui said that he is a good student, and it seems that the Blue Heart Hall teaches well. She has things to do for today, so she has to go and will come back next time. Master said she overpraised him, and he will see her off. Jiang said he's a suck-up, and it's love that makes people submissive. Master said next time, there will be a next time. 
Master told Baron that he did a good job, this time, he gave the Blue Heart Hall a boast, it's to his credit. Master said that you had a good impression of him. Get to know her better when he had the chance and have her invite her here. But what he means is to get along with other halls and learn from each other. Jiang said that the disciple understood him. At this time the men were celebrating something and the man asked Dalin, Has he set the nets yet? Dalin said, How could he disobey Master Cheng's order? All the units under his command had been scattered, and no one was left behind. The man said it was a good thing. Dalin asked Master Chen, What exactly did these people do? Why all the fuss? Dalin said that he heard that it was Boss Gu who ran into trouble. Chen said that they were the ones who blindly rushed to check the opponent otherwise. Dalin said, What do they have to be afraid of? Their gang boss is still a great master. It's worth checking him out first without acting rashly. Just then, outside the door, the guy tells his brother that there is news that six men have entered the town. They all wear straw hats with the same features described earlier. Chin smiled and asked where are they now. Lee said that previously they had no choice but to split up, but now they were finally all together. They would have to be careful from now on. The girl told her brother that she does not like this straw hat. It is ugly. Lee said what is she talking about? Even a man as experienced in life as Bart Wong wears it, which means it must be useful. They were just too conspicuous on this trip and that's why they caused so many problems, so they will be careful from now on. The girl said okay, she would listen to her brother. The boy told Mas Chen that it was them. Chen said six men, all wearing straw hats and straw shoes, and the woman is quite beautiful. Chen said that it was a copper coin that they had previously used to buy soy-infested vegetables. It is indeed a sandbao coin. There is no mistake about it. Ching told the guy to go and find some people and do something around them. The guy said he would do it right away. Ching bowed and asked the deputy gang leader what brought him here. The deputy said that he had heard that the one who defeated Master Gu was a teenager. The deputy said he had to confirm it with his own eyes. What's the situation now? And then the guys started trashing the vendor's merchandise and saying how dare they open a store with such terrible sesame paste. The seller prayed that they would not break anything. He would bow down to them and plead for it. And then the robber told him to get out of here. Lee had seen it all and realized that they had so many problems along the way. They should keep a low profile. But this situation he did. Lee remembered what Jiang had said, that they thought that on their first trip, they had safely traveled all the way from Huainan to Jiangbei. Were they capable of that? The boy thought... If his uncle really did send someone to watch them then there seemed to be no harm in taking care of it. Lee told the girl to go and help the old man. And then she stood in front of them and told them to stop. Chen said, how dare they interfere in this? This is too disrespectful to their gang. The deputy told him to call for more people. At this time, Lee watched the battle take place. Suddenly, through the dust, he saw the sword, and he was surprised. That's when Lee got on the battle pile too and told the guy to be careful, and fought along with him. Lee said he was Gu from Chiyu sect, and he thanked him for his kindness and help. The guy said no problem. His name is Zhou from the Miao Miao sect. Nice to meet you. Ching said that this is a heavy heavenly Zhou sword. The most popular young disciple of the Miao Miao sect. Why is he here? The deputy said strangely. Looks a little familiar. The deputy told Ching to order them to retreat. Ching asked the deputy head, what did he see? The deputy said no, that person beside him, the third son of the Xiuyan cult head, he had seen him at the last lion march, and he couldn't be mistaken. Ching asked, what was the third son doing in their little place? Could it be that that incident had been solved? The deputy said maybe someone is not sure about them and wants to use the third son to get rid of them, or maybe he just wanted to remind them of his presence. Otherwise, why would he have done so many stupid things earlier? Ching asked if he should go and make contact with his third son. The deputy said no. They would wait for him to come to them himself. As for this third son, let him send some guys to guard him and let nothing happen to him on their land. That evening the girl asked her brother, he has been studying it for days on end. Is this book really that interesting? Gu said that it was not only interesting but also very impressive. If he ever meets Brother Wang again... He should thank him properly. The girl said that since they had met this brother, fate seemed to have changed. They not only stayed out of trouble by helping today, but also gained a noble friend. And then Jiang started throwing up and didn't understand why people kept calling him handsome. 
behind his back lately? But then Jiang heard a sound and he thought it was a bell to summon disciples. Never mind, he's in seclusion right now anyway. He would be better off perfecting the poisonous insect pill in this furnace now. It turned out to be the older brother, and the others came back too. The guys said that the one he wanted to kill would not be able to escape even if he hid among ten thousand people, because he was already in the sight of the Lord of Hell. The guy asked his brother, who was that older sister standing next to Qingha? And that's when he punched the younger one. The guy told him that he could only look at her with his eyes down to the floor. The old man said that at this sect meeting in Jiangbei district, five disciples from their contemplation sect had succeeded. One of them, Lin, Mo's student, excelled in both calligraphy and martial arts competitions. And Qingzi, brother Luan San's disciple, even won first place in the tournament. And then they thought where is their big brother? Why don't they see him? At that time the girl was looking for her brother and thought he was in the room. And then she came to the door and knocked, but no one opened the door. She thought her brother had gone on another hike in the mountains. So she decided to wait for him here for a while. Ching was walking through the forest, wondering where his older brother had disappeared to. Then he noticed something and started to play a tune. He realized that he had finished reading the positive and negative formation of the four elements that his older brother had given him. So this time, why doesn't he try to destroy the formation himself, thus showing his brother his progress? And then he smelled the odor of smoking candles. And he began to analyze, and he decided to study the formation. His fingers and wrists free, his skill aligned with his soul, lines intertwined, loops tightened, and the focus shifted to his senses. And then he held his breath, crossing his fingers, Chingza said, bringing the formation closer to order. Lu Jia and the Nine Genera, the sky is round and the earth is square, the four seasons. Having performed the pharmacy, he said that the eight palaces of the great tripod with the four signs changing direction were the formation of heavenly wind and silver rain. But in the southwest, you can follow the points of the great bear and go out. After one cup of tea he didn't realize where he was. He has been walking towards the exit of the formation for so long and still hasn't come out. It shouldn't be like this. Something is wrong here. Alas, big brother is too strong. Why didn't he ask his older brother for help? But then he was afraid, because someone was following him. Here, Qingzi pulled out his claws to take no chances and decided to defend himself. But in the moment... He couldn't believe that his defense didn't work. This guy wouldn't back down and decided not to hesitate and attack. And then his attack worked and Ching He flew backwards. Ching He wondered why it was having no effect and continues to fight to the death. And then Ching Zi used his sword to defend himself but was surprised by such a strong attack in which he fell down and lost his sword. And then he started to hear a voice as he was told to wake up. Qingzi opened his eyes and asked, Is it big brother? Jiang said, Didn't he tell him to stand at the entrance and play the flute when he arrived? What was the point of barging in? Qingzi said he was wrong. Jiang said if he can handle it, then let him call for help. If he didn't come quickly, he would be killed there. Does he understand? Jiang said for his brother to take a sip. The poison was about to penetrate his internal organs. Let him just take a sip. He doesn't need to drink it. And then Jiang punched him a couple times to bring him to his senses. Junior said he didn't need to hit him a second time. Jiang realized that it didn't matter. He finally got a good little brother that the system didn't pay attention to. So he would quietly train him. Four years ago, they were told that there was a rule in the contemplation sect that every two months he had to come down from the mountain to pass a test. One of the reasons for such a rule was to make sure that the disciples weren't stuck on the mountain all day and night and didn't know anything about the ordinary world of humans other than cultivation. That's when they confessed to him that they were in love with him. That's when he realized he was screwed and needed to stay away from girls. Jiang told her that she was like a little sister to him, nothing more. The girl said it didn't matter. One day she would make her older brother not see her as just a sister. And then the golden youth came upon him, and Jiang thought it would be easy to kill them. But he is afraid that their fathers will be looking for them. If you kill them, you will have to kill their elders as well. Jiang said that the value of the newspaper idea, they should realize, make a lot of money. The golden youth thanked him for the story. Jiang said he could teach him how to properly bond with his sister, he could try. The guy said he was asking him to duel with him, and only the winner would get the right to be with his little sister. Jiang has already said that he doesn't like her, and then they decided everything in a duel. 
Jiang said that Ching He understood nothing but physical persuasion. Ching He said that it turns out the younger sister was attracted by the hidden power of the older brother he lost. He hurt them today, and he is willing to do his best and help them. Jiang told Brother Wu that there was something he had to ask him about his strength, hoped he wouldn't tell anyone. Ching He said not to worry, he has learned of his knowledge and strength, and he admires him for it. He Wu Ching He swears to the heavens, that he will never reveal his brother's strength. Ching He said that big brother looked so grief-stricken, truly treasuring the friendship. As expected of his perfect brother, Ching He said that he had won the competition among the sects of Jiangbei district, and he was here to inform them of his joyous event. Jiang said, so that's why he dared to break into the formation? Ching He said that he mainly wanted to show his brother his progress, so he did it. Jiang said that winning the competition is a happy event, so he won't he talk about it much, but next time let him remember the time when he is confident. Jian realized that joining the contemplation sect had actually saved his life. Ching He said that he would remember it. Jian held out the medicine to him and said that it was to eliminate toxins. Whenever he ate poison, this tea would make him vomit it out immediately, and since he ranked first in the tournament, he would definitely be given more resources and some people would inevitably be jealous. Jian poked him and told him that it was a shadowless dart he had used a while ago. It was invisible and silent. Let him take it away and practice. Jian told him to sit down and tell him what was new at this meeting. Ching Zhe said that he met a master named Zhou at this competition. Jian asked, Is he also at the peak of the ninth rank? Ching He said that in terms of cultivation, he is on the same level as him. Jiang remembered that even though they had started to cooperate in the beginning, however, he had started to consider him as his true younger brother afterward. Ching He said that the second-ranked predator Thunder-Winged Fox had recently settled in the birch forest. Jiang said to watch him and let him know immediately if a beast above rank 3 appeared. Then he would give him a formation that would help him break through. Jiang told the guy that here were the materials he had to find for him for the next month. Jiang said he should go back because he had some business to attend to. Ching He said that he had an unpleasant request, but he didn't know whether he should say it or not. Jiang said then let him better not speak. Ching Zhe asked if he would let him speak. Ching Zhe said that he had recently developed a set of fighting stances would like to ask his brother for advice. Jiang said his words sounded confident. Okay, he would play with him. Ching Zhe said, he apologizes to him in advance, and then Ching Zhe gathered strength and attacked with hundreds of petals circling in chaos. But Jiang just stood still and grabbed his sword with two fingers. Jiang said it was too slow. Jiang said it was still a good technique, but he was just too slow. And why was he standing still while he threw the darts? Wouldn't it have been more effective to throw them during a sword attack? Ching Zhe said that he couldn't do it yet. Jiang told him to tell him how much he had practiced. Ching He apologized and said that he didn't seem to be very good at it. He would go back and practice 800 times. Jiang told him to be careful not to wander into the formation again on the way. Otherwise, he would take a month's worth of pills off him. Jiang is afraid if he praises him, his self-confidence will skyrocket. It's better to teach him with a whip. When he got home, Jiang heard someone shouting to him. And turning around he saw Qin standing in the bushes Jiang asked her what she was doing. She had just returned from Van County and brought him some souvenirs, which she left in her usual place. Qin turned around and said that she would go and wish good dreams to her older brother. Opening the gift he saw a mica ruff, nine generations, wow, she is able to find something like this. Qin was happy that her brother had said four words to her today. He even took out the gift she gave him in front of her so it must be a mutual love. Qin said that four years of observation had not been in vain. Brother is very reserved, and it's impossible to approach him when there are many people around. But even this kind of restraint is worth it. One moment, the older brother is in a good mood between one and three o'clock in the morning. She should make a note to that effect. The next morning Jiang walked up to the office and knocked asking, Hall master, did he want to see him? Jiang came in and said he was paying his respects to the hall master. The master told him to sit down and have tea with him, and then Jian noticed the mug that Yui had been drinking from, and it was lying like an exhibit on the shelf and the master. Jian thanked him for his time. 
Mater asked Bayrayan how the case he asked him to do last time was going. Jiang told the master that he didn't know what to say when he was so reckless to go to protect you. Master said didn't they say last time that they would deepen the relationship between the two halls and develop together. Jiang said that they are studying the art of Go after all, and the water mirror hall is studying music, so how are they going to develop together? Master said no, why can't they? It's all about finesse, there's always something in common or maybe a martial arts sparring session would be appropriate. Didn't Jiang say last time that he wanted to apply for another training place at the back of the mountain? If he does it right, Master will ask. Jiang said that no matter how much he didn't want to, it was too dangerous to face the sisters from the water mirror hall who could trigger a rank D task with every move they made. And then the system came out and Jiang said he knew it. True love is really an ass. Jiang said that he would do as the master said. At this time in the water mirror hall, Qin was playing an instrument, and all the guys gathered in front of her to listen to her. The brothers said that the little sister's pestles are really amazing. The big strings sound as loud as rain, and the small strings sound like a whisper. She said that she had purposely played a few wrong notes, but no one pointed them out. If brother Jiang was here, he would have given her a stern and displeased look and said that she was clumsy. Obviously she should be upset, but why is her heart beating so fast at the mere thought of it? She really wants to. Just then, the triplets came in and said that they had very big news. They saw Brother Jiang come to the water mirror hall. Qin rejoiced and asked, Is it true? The girls said it was true. They had seen it with their own eyes. It seems to be in the direction of the mirror garden. Said her Qin, Why don't they go and see? We can consider it a chance encounter. It's normal to run into each other in the water mirror hall after all. Jin said okay, then they will call Chiu to join them. Just then Jian was met by a guy and asked what is he doing here. Jiang said that he is a disciple of the Blue Heart Hall. He is here to see Protector Yu, please inform her. The guy told him to stand over there. Jian looked and saw a line of people standing to see her. The guy said that they were just like him. They were ordered to come here. Jiang realized that when the top beam was bent, the lower ones would also warp. No wonder the male disciples are willing to kill for their beautiful sisters. It's all in their heritage. How many men per girl are there in this sect? That's a good thing, though. Since so many people are waiting, he thinks they won't be able to see her. Just then, someone asked Bayran, what was he doing here? Jian now realized that this world was really full of malice towards him. The guy said that this disciple is here to find her, protect her you, he only wanted to send her a message. You asked Jian, was he looking for her? She understands, and told him to follow her. Jian wondered if she even understood there. And then the system popped up and Jiang thought, does it really negate his intelligence? Damn it. Why, he'd rather die than be destroyed. Yi Jiang said that he was choosing the second option. Walking behind you he smelled, a fragrance, and realized that it was something precious. You told Bayran that since he was looking for her himself, she assumes he wanted something? And then Jiang was thinking about something and didn't hear her. Jiang said that the disciple was apologizing, just that he had just smelled an unusual fragrance, and was a little hesitant. Yui said that he was able to pick out any zero particular fragrance from the many plants and flowers in this mirror garden. Jiang said that he also expresses in his spare time some flowers and plants, so with difficulty but can distinguish. You said that he does have many hobbies. She heard from the master that he also does calligraphy and painting. Jiang realized that plants though sold very quickly. But in the end, he wasn't too keen on it. He was just talking about a few talents no one was interested in. Jiang said that he just happened to do it by chance. It wasn't even worth talking about. He came here because he received orders from the hall master. They hoped to deepen their relationship with the water mirror hall. Jiang said, what protector you said is very true. He will go back and report it to the hall master. You grabbed him and told him he would just walk away? And not even try to challenge the decision? Jiang said, What defender you said was indeed so reasonable that she didn't even have anything to object to. Yui said that after all, it's about refinement, and there's always something about refinement. They can also learn about each other's martial arts. That's normal after all. Jiang thought of telling her to hurry up and marry their hall master. They even think alike, you said, in all the years this defender has been in the contemplation sec, Jiang is the most special. Although he doesn't have great talent, he is positive and optimistic, trying to find opportunities to prove himself. Although she said so, of course the decision is not hers to make, 
she has to go to the hall master. Jiang said that he had already been in the contemplation sect for five years and knew that without a high enough level of skill, taking a position one was unworthy of would only bring suffering and death upon oneself. You said that she understood what Jiang meant, but she was still optimistic about him, so if he needed help in the future, just let him ask. Jiang said that he would then like to go in search of the source of this unusual fragrance, and wondered if she could go with him. You said that she agreed. Jian saw that this victory had been played out perfectly. Now he would be able to see the herbs, and the protective you woman was now no longer keeping him on a short leash. Plus she had offered her patronage. You asked Jian how about it. Does he want to meet their hall master? The hall master. The guy was surprised. Jian saw that the system didn't offer any options, so it wasn't that big of a problem. Jian said then could she please escort him out? Yui asked. What's so special about this fragrance? What is it that attracts him so much? Jiang said it's nothing special, he's just curious, and this fragrance is something he's never smelled before, which makes him really curious about it. You said that there were not even a few words of truth in his mouth. Immediately, Qin paid tribute to the protector. You asked, is Master Shi Tang in place? Qin said yes, and motioned for them both to enter the room. Yui said that there was no hurry. Let her go in first, and tell her that she brought a disciple from the Blue Heart Hall, and have her ask if she wants to meet. You told Jian not to say anything stupid when he sees Hall Master Sure, she is not good-natured like her. And in a moment, Jian wondered about the force, and didn't realize who it was. And then, someone put a hand on his shoulder, and Jian jumped up in fright. Sure asked, is this the kid she brought with her? You said yes, his name is Jian and he is one of the registered disciples of the Blue Heart Hall. Jiang realized that he had heard that the master of the Water Mirror Hall was a stunning personality. He had never thought that she could be so beautiful. Sure asked the registered student, does he have something to ask her? Jiang said that he was paying his respects. When he first entered the Mirror Garden, he smelled an unusual fragrance, and came here in search of it. Sure told him to go with her and describe this unusual flavor, and if he described it well, the hall master would reward her. Shur said it was very impressive that he could so accurately describe the scent of a terry daffodil among those hundreds of flowers. Jiang said that he could just smell some special plants. She told him to come in. She wants to see what else he can do. Qin said that this brother from the Blue Heart Hall is amazing. Yui asked her, with what? She said that because colored scents can overshadow or conflict with each other and mirror soda with many flowers and plants. The smells are so mixed and chaotic that the ability to discern the scents within in such a situation is truly impressive. Yui said she really did. She knew there was no truth in what he said. And then they started discussing things in the room, with Jiang showing her how to do it properly. You walked up to them and asked Jiang what they were talking about. Jiang said that Master Shi said that her fern pot was a little sluggish, and asked him to take a look at it. Yui said it looked pretty good. Jiang said that whether a plant has spirituality or not depends on the little things. The leaves of this plant are of different sizes and have a disorderly pattern, indicating that it is internally at odds with itself. You asked, what should I do? Jiang said that he was just talking to Master Sher about it, that if they wanted the plant to grow well, one would have to cut out the core. The branches of this fern look strong, but they are actually very fragile. You have to be careful not to damage the inside when the core is harvested. Yui said he didn't miss a beat. Will it sprout more side shoots as he said? Jian said that he guaranteed that in less than two months, their fern would bloom. Yui said she would believe him this time. Come on, let's go. He'll help her figure something else out. Yui noticed something and asked why he was turning his face away. Jian said it would be unseemly to keep looking. The girl asked Yui where she found such an interesting baby boy. Yui said that instead of finding him, she had to dig very deep. Jiang said that he wondered if Hall Master Shi could take him to the Terry Daffodil. He is very curious about it. Yui said that way, since he answered her question correctly, she would guide him inside with no problem. Walking into the room Jiang saw that there were many exotic flowers and plants, some of which he had only seen in books. These are huge resources. Yui asked him how he liked it. Did he like it? Jiang said he likes it. Master Sher's collection is a real discovery for him, but unfortunately, you asked, it's unfortunate that she's not taking care of them well, isn't it? Jian said, that disciple didn't mean to offend Master Sher. Yui said who said he took offense. She, for example, 
appreciates their beauty, but somehow another is responsible for their constant grooming. Sure said that she didn't collect these flowers and plants. They were all donated by other people. Sure asked the guy, does he think those flowers are wasted on her? Jiang said not really. Flowers are meant to be enjoyed. Because the Shea Hall master likes them, their value is maintained and they are not considered a waste. Shea said he was eloquent. The Terry Daffodil he's looking for is right here. Come this way. Seeing a Terry Daffodil that's just right for the potions he's been working on lately. Sure said that if he really liked it that much, he could have the pot. Jiang asked her, is that true? Shea said sure, but she has two conditions, and one is, she hopes he will come and tend the flowers and plants for her in the future. Jiang said that this disciple agrees. This condition was just asking for itself. Besides the Terry Daffodil, there are several other flower pots here. Sure said the second condition was that he had to beat her in an alco battle. At this point, Jian already agreed and stopped talking. He asked, What kind of alcohol battle? Sure said right, alco battle. Just don't let him tell her he doesn't know how. Jiang said, He knows a little, but, Sure said no, but if he wants to get this gift, he has to defeat her in a duel. Yui said that it wasn't good to play such a game with a student of another hall. Sure said, What does it matter? So is he playing or not? Jiang said in that case, I wonder how to keep a tally of winners and losers? You asked Jian why he was falling for the hall master's nonsense. Shur said she was having so much fun. This little student is very interesting. The rules are simple. Whoever gets drunk first loses. After a while, Jiang was saying how it had come to this. Shur told him to be careful, for she was very good at it. Jiang thought that even though she smoked, drank and got tattoos, she was still a good hall master, wasn't she? At this time, the girls were telling Sister Chin that they couldn't practice that movement. Could she give them some tips? The girls saw something and said, isn't this the mirror garden? She can't believe they wandered in here by accident. Why don't they come in and ask the hall elders? The triplets asked, why hasn't the brother come out yet? It had been almost an hour. What was he doing out there? Could he have come out from somewhere else yet? Jean said, what she doesn't think, the outer hall disciples can only enter and exit the mirror surrender through the main gate, that's the rule. Chio said, and maybe brother really has some important business there, let them wait a little longer. The girl said right, she may not be able to match a few sisters, but she will be more attentive and diligent. Jiang told Master Sher to make her drink. Sher said that she would not lose and drink this glass. Just then, she lit up and said, one more time. Jiang saw that Hall Master Sher was indeed a complete novice at this. The last move was terrible. If she hadn't brought the wine herself, he would have thought she had decided to just get drunk at someone else's expense. Just then she poured into a glass and said no more. You told her to save it for today. They had already drunk three pitchers. Sher told her to bring another jug of wine. Yui hoped that Jiang would help her, to convince her away from this. And then Jiang told Master Sher to continue what they had started. An hour later, they were all playing, and Sher was losing, and then Jiang told Ma Stray Sher that he was here, while she was hugging the pillar already. The system suddenly popped up and said that the task was completed. Sher asked him, how did he manage to get behind her? What was with all that fast movement? Yui asked the guy, is he really going to get their hall master drunk to the point of memory loss? Jiang said to hall master Sher, why don't they end it there? Sher said no. She can still play. Yui picked her up and told her it was time for her to take a break from everything. Sure yelled don't. She wants to play. Jiang thought. Is she three years old? How did she become a hall master? Is it all because she's so strong? And then Sure attacked you and told her not to get involved in all this. Yu was frightened and managed to dodge. Sure said no one would stop her from playing today. You said badly. It's a crushing phoenix. Yui said that if she starts fighting with the master... Let Jiang find a way to escape. Jiang said that's what he would do. Yui was surprised at his decisive answer. At a moment like this, wouldn't one usually ask if there was anything she could do to help? Sure said she wants to see who dares to stop her from playing. You began to apologize to Master. Jiang was surprised and wondered if he should leave now. Suddenly, everything quieted down and the fire abruptly disappeared. Jiang asked what happened to Hall Master Sure. You said that everything was fine, the hall master was just drunk and sleeping. Jian saw her tattoos and realized that it was a beautiful drawing on her arm. 
but then he was surprised that it was drawn. The girl said, Why don't they walk up to the entrance of the Blue Heart Hall next time and meet him by chance? Anyway, the lines are worked out, just need to change a few names. And here the sisters were screaming their support. Sheen said for them to forget about it. Surely the elder will scold her. It's time for them to go to class, let's go. Shay was saying in her sleep for daddy to let her play a little longer, just a little longer, and she was begging him. Jiang told Yu's protector that then he probably wouldn't linger any longer today. Yui told him to wait, and said that usually the hall master isn't like this. Jiang said he would leave the rest to protector Yui. This disciple needs to go. Jiang thought, here you go, listening to a Xian level story. There's something about this hall master. You also thought that he was indeed very different from an ordinary disciple. The girl was telling Mungu to go back together while Mungu watched something and studied it. Mungu smiled and said okay. The girl said she had such a healing smile, like a holy maiden from the contemplation clan. Mungu and the girl were seen off and the boy said he would love to go back with her in the same company too. She's like a fairy tale fairy. And then the girls met Lin's sister. Lin was surprised to see the boys in front of her and asked how they were doing. The girl said to Sister Lin, Thank you very much for being their chaperone and giving them all high marks. It's a small token of appreciation from a few of them. She hopes her sister likes it. Lin said they did well. They are much more resourceful than she was during her first challenge. That was all of Big Brother's admonition. He said that next time, for them to remember, not to eat mushrooms in the wild when they see them. And of course, all sorts of little heartwarming details that are beautiful and silent. Lin said it gets cold very quickly in these mountains. It really makes you feel very safe. And that's the glory of Big Brother. The girl said to Lin, can she hear what is being said to her? Lin apologized and said that a lot of good memories suddenly came over her, and she thought a bit. The girl said yes. Opening it she was surprised. She said it was a spirit rhyme gem. She had heard that it could improve the surrounding aura just by being in the house. It transforms a room into an aura-rich practice space. It's quite a rare treasure. In fact, the snacks her little sister made last time, she likes them more than the cultivation items. Therefore, can she ask for a change, guys? The girl said okay. They will go back and do it now. She will bring it to her tomorrow. Lin said she was looking forward to it. People started talking behind her and Lin said that she should follow her older sister's example and work hard to get a place in the tournament. Upon arriving at Lin's cultivation place in the middle of nowhere, Lin noticed that brother was actually here. She took his stuff and said it was his big brother's scent. He did take the initiative to ask her out. Lin thought it meant making a covenant of three lives. As she dressed, she realized that her brother liked this style. Jiang thought, should he go to the water mirror hall today? No matter, he would start by going to the mountains for reconnaissance. And then he saw Yui and said he was paying his respects to her. You said that the head wanted to see him so he should go with her. You said, isn't he curious about what happened after he left yesterday? Jiang said correctly. Yui said whether she should tell her that he is very cunning or not he just doesn't have desires and aspirations. Jiang said it's much simpler than that. It's just the fear of death. Yu couldn't help herself and started laughing. You said, is the contemplation sex so dangerous in his eyes? Jiang said no. The whole continent seems dangerous to him. You said that he is right. The sex rules that disciples must descend the mountain every month is wrong on the development of this realization among the disciples, so. Zi Jin and the others are very simple-minded. She was very concerned about their trial. And just by chance she met him. This is also a kind of fate. Jiang raised his hands and said no, it's just a coincidence. Yui told him to forget about it and walked in. Sure asked Jian why he didn't pick up the daffodil yesterday. Jiang said that this disciple was too drunk and doesn't remember anything from yesterday. Shur laughed and said she told him she was very good. How about this? Do you want to do their fight again tonight? Shur said that she heard from Protector Yu that she was the one who got drunk first yesterday, so he could have the daffodil to himself. Shur told him to remember to look after the flowers for her. Jiang thanked her and said that the disciple would remember that. Shur said that they can go now and she will continue drawing. Shur asked you, doesn't she have anything to do? She remembers that she's in charge of the hall rounds today, right? Yui said that she had left the hall patrolling to protect her son, so she would be here for the rest of the day. She told Jiang to figure out how to convince you to leave, and they'll keep playing with him like yesterday. She asked him, does he not know how to use covert communication yet? But let him listen then, 
she would tell him how. Jiam told you that the head of the hall said she wanted to continue with yesterday, so he hoped she could refrain from interfering. You asked the head of the hall, did she forget about their pact? Sure said to listen to her, it's not about that, it's about Jiang saying stupid things. Just then, Yui got angry and looked at the head of the hall. She lowered her head and said that she was wrong. Jiang saw that these two were nothing but pains in the ass. However, it was easy for him to get the seeds. A week later, Jiang was in a garden, a purple bamboo garden on a mountain slope. This was Jiang's place of cultivation, and he brought his terry daffodil back to his home. When he looked at his all the plants, he was very happy, for they would soon begin to bear fruit and be useful to him. Taking the worm in his hands, Jiang spoke. How does he see such a pleasant environment? Does he see how well he is being treated? He's in a better mood than he thought. But alas, space is still scarce, especially after he brought flower seeds from the head of the shur. With a batch of cuties about to be dispatched, he fears that the aura in this courtyard is a little insufficient to share. But let it be, there's always a way out. We'll live to see, and then we'll see. And then he was told that the master of the hall was calling him to him. Jiang said he was on his way. That obsessed sleazeball. After all, he can't hide forever. As he arrived at the door, Jiang realized that he couldn't avoid it. Suddenly, the door opened in front of him. Master said that he knew Jiang could do it. He was truly the best disciple of their hall. Master said he was standing pillar. Protector you agreed to cooperate. Why didn't he tell him earlier when he handled everything? Master said he had been worried about him for the past two days. No, I mean he was worried about him. Jiang thought that the female protector had actually agreed without any persuasion. The master said that as they agreed, he would give him another plot of land at the back of the hill. Don't worry, it will have more aura than the one he has now. Jiang saw that indeed, everything had succeeded on its own. Just two days ago he was worried about the lack of space, and today there was already a better place on his doorstep. Master said that Jiang should be more careful about this in the future since he was the one who made this collaboration possible. In the water mirror hall, Yui said that the lesson was over, and they had a friendly match Blue Heart Hall in three days. They are hoping to keep things on their best behavior at this time so as not to embarrass their water mirror hall. The girl said, is the Blue Heart Hall something great? Why the sudden need for a friendly match with them? Qin thought, isn't the place where Brother Jiang is now the Blue Heart Hall? and then the triplets immediately started smiling. Yui told everyone to be quiet. The reason for this friendly match is that the hall is interested in cooperating with the Blue Heart Hall to develop and learn from each other. Chio asked, could it be that their sincerity touched the heavens? The triplets said that it must be fate. Chin said that she thought they needed to have a small meeting before they went to the Blue Heart Hall, and then the triplets raised their hands and talked about who would be responsible for what. Chin asked what the incense burner was for. The girl said to create an atmosphere. And then Chio said then she is in charge of the place. So let's talk in her room. Chin said that she would then be in charge of asking questions and taking notes. Meeting in Chio's room at 11 o'clock. The triplets came into the room and said it was a lot of fun. She wants to do it again. Let's change the code word to match. But alas they are not here to play. They have things to do. This is the steamed cheese with sugar she brought and it's delicious. Chin told her to put it on the table. Chin said that they were going to discuss various precautions when dealing with her brother today, so she would cover a few points first. Chin said that first of all, in the first part of the elder brother covenant, one could correctly say what they had learned. No one needs to be told what he did. Apparently, the brother doesn't want outsiders to know that he is very competent and good at various techniques. Chin said that she wrote some things that big brother is good at, so let the girls familiarize themselves with them. The girl said Bart is just as good at cartography, painting and calligraphy? Chin said, right. Chin asked her if she remembered the blueprint book her brother had given her. She has since checked it, and it's not even on sale. She thinks her brother wrote it himself. The girls were all surprised when they heard this, and they all gathered in a pile. Chin opened her notebook and decided to show everyone. The triplet said it was a great drawing. She spent two years learning to draw at home, and it's hard to imagine it being a practice card. And the handwriting on it is so beautiful, as if written in calligraphy. The older brother is really incredibly talented in all areas, and it seems like everything the older one knows, he's sure to know how to do, which is awesome. Chin asked if there was anything to add to what she wrote. Chio said that she had something to add. 
Big brother, he should be able to make hidden weapons. Chin asked, what kind of weapon? In her recollection, Chio said she was under the influence of medication that night, but the sensation of the smoke covering her five senses when her brother rescued her was even more frightening. She later learned that the smoke was released by her older brother, so he's unpredictable in general. Three days later, they gathered Chin said that in general, one should never approach a brother or try to greet him in a crowd, nor should one reveal to others, including the teacher, how good a brother was. People were surprised and said that it was Hall Head Zhang, a star Sima master? So majestic. The guy greeted everyone and said that he was the master of the Blue Heart Hall, and he would like to meet all the disciples of the Water Mirror Hall. Swordsmanship has reached such a level that one can see the incarnation? What kind of strength must one possess to be capable of such a thing? With such a ferocious sword aura, he must be a very cold person, and he will personally officiate this friendly match today, hoping that both sides can learn something from the sparring. And so the competition begins. Master said that it must have been hard for Protector Yu to gather so many students. You said that it was not a big deal. She was used to it. The master said that in a matter as important as the cooperation between the two halls, there had to be a personal appearance by both masters. The master asked her if she was comfortable sitting in that chair. If it was uncomfortable, he would ask someone to change it for her. Yui said quite convenient, no need to bother. Master asked if the place is suitable for viewing. Does it need to be moved? You told the master that the match has started. The master said okay, he would watch the match first. The guys were saying that this girl looked too pretty, even in the crowd of beautiful students from the water mirror hall. Long live the hall master, everyone shouted. They can't believe that the hall master was able to agree on the camaraderie of the matches with the water mirror hall. These three students surprisingly look equally cute. His hair is fine, right? Should he change his stance? Does he think he looks good with that sword in his hand? Jian said that these flowers are divided into hard-leaved and small-leaved types. For example, this cold moonlit night is hard-leaved. The most characteristic feature of hardy-leaved plants is that they have white spots on the surface or nodule-like growths. Sure asked, was it really a good idea not to go to the friendly match today? Jiang asked, didn't hall master sure also go like that? Shay said she's the master of the hall. That's a privilege. Jiang said then he is also a registered personal disciple then and has privileges. Sure said that he was the only one she had seen who enjoyed the privileges of a personal disciple with such an arrogant face. But that's what she likes about him, little Jiang. How about doing something more interesting while you is away? The guys could see that the hormones emanating from these guys during morning classes today literally saturated the entire air making him anxious. Jiang thought that if Lu or the girls from the water mirror hall waved at him, also shouted out long time no see brother or something like that, the system alert would just instantly go off. She told him to go play. It's going to be a lot of fun. Jiang said that she is a hall master so she should carry her responsibilities on her shoulders. As a hall master, it's not too late to return to Yenfo. Sure said no way. Not that she wanted to be the head of this hall. Jiang said that he would just find another student then. To play with, and let him come every time, he had things to do. Sure said that they don't even dare to look at her side, let alone play with her. Jiang said he doesn't look either. Jiang told her to behave herself, master. He must continue to teach Xiao Duo how to take care of these flowers. Sure told him to wait for her here, and then she brought him the box and told Jian to see what she had in her hand. Jiang said surprisingly, this is the fruit of a baby's soul. This treasure blooms once every twenty years and bears fruit once every twenty years. It only grows in a few specific places and is occupied by a few powerful forces. Who is Master Sure? Sure said that Jiang doesn't know. It is called baby soul fruit. It can help a person on the verge of life and death. It is a very powerful treasure. Here, look closer. Jian realized that this scent simply inhaled a feeling of ascension to the heavens. A worthy excellent material that is rightfully on the treasure list. Sure asked him how did he like it. Jiang said that of course he did. Although judging from the system options, this baby soul fruit is not simple at all. He is determined to get it. After all, his ultimate goal is to make it so that the system never again gives out rewards above basic skills. And then how do you accomplish that? Of course to become the strongest in the world. A few years ago, when he had just joined the contemplation sect, 
there could be dozens of system triggers per day. It means that there are fewer and fewer people and things in the contemplation sect that can threaten him. Then, by analogy, once he becomes that strong, that no one else could threaten him, naturally, he would no longer be given difficult options. But how does he get it? Shea said that she knew he liked strange materials. How about this one? She'll give it to him if he has fun with it. The first time they met, Hall Master Sher had run the system once. Then he thought she was just testing it. Sher asked him if he was playing with her or not. And then Jiang decided that he would play with her. That's too generous an offer. But then Yui walked up to the house and began to hear voices as she yelled for more to be poured. Yui thought that she was so awkward at the interaction, and she means she's having fun here, and suddenly clenched her fist. She couldn't help herself and broke the door down screaming, to the master of Sher Hall. But she was surprised to see the guys playing the game. Sher said that protector Yu had returned, and thanked her, for working so hard today. Yui said to the hall master, didn't she promise her that she wouldn't fool around with her student anymore? Sure said she wasn't fooling around. Just having a little fun. Also she listened and didn't drink today. Jiang said they could play if she wanted. But no alcohol. Otherwise no games. And then Sure got excited and agreed. You said to Jian. Why is he fooling around with the hall master again? Hadn't she already told him earlier? And then Jiang realized that it looked like Protector Yu's promise to cooperate with the heart hall was more or less an element of forcing him to practice. Looks like he should once again clarify the details of their relationship. Jiang sat down at the table and asked her if it was more or less. And then Yui got angry and could have exploded in a moment. Jiang asked her, does she not want to play anymore? Then the student will leave first. She told him to wait. She bets for more. It should be more this time. And then Jiang took the mug and said that she had lost. Sure stood still and Jiang slapped a piece of paper on her forehead. Sure said it was her turn to shake. And she saw you, and asked her, does she want to play with them? You slapped the table, and said she was talking to Jiang. Jiang said it was the only way to avoid the two halls competition. You asked, is he angry about the cooperation between the two halls? Jiang said correctly. Yui said she's doing it for his own good, so that he's in good standing with his hall master. Jiang said then she might think he's just picking on her. Yui said that she recognized that this cooperation agreement by the Blue Heart Hall did have the intention of targeting him. Shur intervened in their conversation and told them not to fight. Yui said she apologized for that, even though she knew he had his own way, tried to impose her way on him. Jiang realized that there was indeed a deep chasm here. There was a need to clarify the relationship once more or else she would kill him sooner or later. Jiang smiled and said he wasn't accepting. You asked him why? Jiang said why should he forgive her just because she apologized? You said she didn't do anything too serious, did she? Jiang said that he was very grateful to protect you for caring about him so much, he spoke to her very frankly, and he also no longer intends to treat her as an elder she can have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with. Shu sure was surprised and said, would a normal person say something directly? And then you wanted to say something, but Sher interrupted her and said that it's not good to quarrel. Jiang asked Sher, does she want to continue? Jiang said that it wasn't a fight, he just brought clarity to their relationship. You said that she apologized for being too selfish this time and not living up to the trust he had placed in her. You asked if she reformed, would he forgive her this time? Jiang said that in that case he would agree. Yui said okay. Then she decided to prepare a good compensation for him. He would really like it. Jiang asked Defender Yu if she would like to play a few games with him. Shu sure said to play a couple of games together. And then Yui got angry and started yelling that no more games. Jiang said okay. Then he would go first. As he was leaving, he heard Shu sure asking him not to leave her alone. At that time, he wondered what kind of compensation she would give. The next day, Shu sure came in and asked Jian what they were going to do today. Jiang asked her, maybe fishing? Shea said no. What's the fun of just sitting around doing nothing? She wants to play poker, go guessing. Jiang saw that she was indeed an interesting babe who didn't like wine, but was looking forward to getting drunk. She carries a pipe with her, but there's some nasty stuff inside. He thinks it smells like cigarettes but is not addictive. She's terrible at games, but wants to play every day. She seems like a rebellious girl who grew up too fast. Jiang asked Duo, do they have fish in the kitchen? Duo said yes, there are a couple of base. 
so he told her to take him there. Sure asked Jian, is he going to cook? Jiang said yes, does she want to try it? Sure said sure, and told her to go. After arriving in the kitchen Jiang started cooking. Sure asked, what's in this bottle? It smells so good. Duo said she had never smelled such a fragrance. She asked her older brother what it was. Jiang turned around and said it was a secret, and decided to cook the fish in a hurry. Shur saw the dish and asked if she could try it. After tasting it they were both surprised. Shea said the crispy crust and the meat emitted an unbeatable flavor. It's so delicious. Duo said too that the fish tastes amazing. Just explodes in your mouth. A burst of flavors. Shur told Jian to cook them two more fish. Jia said that freshly caught fish from the river would taste much better. Would she like to go fishing? Shur raised her hand and said what she wanted. Jiang saw that he didn't have the health to play and drink with her every day. So going fishing for a change wouldn't hurt. But then Yui came in and said that she could smell a wonderful aroma here. What did they cook? Shur said Jiang cooked perch. They were going fishing. Will you go with them? You thought about fishing. The head of the hall who can't stand still for five seconds is going fishing? Jiang asked her if she would join. You said alas, she would love to but she has something to do later. She pulled out a gift and said it was Maidenhair's seed. It wasn't easy to get it. Enough to make it up to you? Jiang took her in his arms and rejoiced. He told her that it was enough for him to accept the apology. Yui realized that everyone has their own path. She would only make things worse if she forced him to follow a different path. They were bound by fate, but she had to give him the right to choose. You said she decided to go fishing with her to keep her from gambling and getting drunk. And she wants to eat the base he cooked. Just then, Jiang found a new place to cultivate. Jiang stood above the ground and began to sing and rejoice. But then someone shouted the name of Zhao Zhao. And then a bird flew in with a letter, and Jiang took it and said it was time to go out for a walk. Jiang immediately decided to go to Mingzhe City and the guy immediately headed to the restaurant. Once inside, Jiang said that he had come to meet a friend. His last name is Lu. The guy said he was upstairs. Lu saw Wang and said he was here. Immediately, the system kicked in. Jiang was surprised that the system didn't want him to reveal the information. Someone might interfere with them. So Jiang decided that they would just chat with him and observe to see if anyone suspicious was around. Jiang asked him, had he heard about the disaster in Hadong City? Lu asked, what other disaster? Jiang said it was an invasion of locusts. Several people died, they will hope they will be bypassed. Jiang felt that there was someone at the fourth level of the black phase in the inn. Strange, had he also heard about the treasure in the forest? But what was the point of it? Jiang told Lu that they should get out of here. There's someone in the inn in the black phase. He doesn't know if he came to explore the forest or not. Lu said Black Phase is in such a wilderness? Jiang said yes. Let him be careful. Now let him tell me what's going on there. Lu said that besides the second level thunder beast they had discovered earlier, the Xian beasts and the second level blood shadow also came into the forest. Jiang said, at last he was right and a great harvest awaits him. Let them rest first and go to the forest around nine o'clock in the evening. So it was evening and the guys headed into the forest. Jiang saw that there really seemed to be something wrong with the man at the inn. Jiang said for Lu to use the mysterious Numa to speed up. Lu said he would perform it now. Jiang realized that this man was trying to catch them. He's not using Numa, but following them secretly. A random passerby wouldn't do that. Under the birch forest the guy said Kima for the cultivator headed into the forest. The guy was asked, how strong are they? The guy said that one is at the ninth level of the black phase and the other is only at the fifth level of the meditation stage. The guy said okay and report to the boss. The guy told the boss, just as he said, a cultivator at the ninth level of the black phase came here. What should they do? The boss said no coincidences. Soon these beasts would start fighting. The guy told the killer that the boss ordered them killed. The assassin told him to rely on him. The guy told him to just make it quick, so the killer doesn't mock them by pulling organs out of still-living bodies like he usually does. They've got a lot of work to do. The killer said that something seemed to have happened. The boy didn't understand why he couldn't sense his presence, and then the guy got a knee to the forehead. The guy was surprised to see Kem. He shouted to the others to come quickly, 
they had to deal with the intruders. But then the guy saw the beast and said that although it was dangerous, he had also attracted the attention of two beasts in addition to the others. After they arrived during the confusion, they would be able to escape. At this time, Jiang and Lu were getting rid of the others. And then one of them was left behind and started shouting to his siblings. The guy said he would fight him to the death. Jiang said he was reacting as if he was some kind of villain. And then Jiang pulled out his sword and forces said, What is it they took the initiative to contact him? Lu now realized that his older brother was really strong. He killed all those people with the snap of a finger. And Lu was completely useless. But enough of being sad, there was still a long way to go. Jiang told him to take care of the tea hole and for him to find out where they came from. And then Jiang approached the animals and said that no one had allowed them to leave and ordered them to sit down. Lu told Jiang that they were all from Wash Palace. But this organization is from Anzang Island. And then Jiang told him to take a look. Jiang ran his finger over the corpse and told Lu to smell what it smelled like. Lu said it smelled like hydrangea. Jiang said that this blush had a mixed scent of rose and orchid. He didn't think it was possible to buy such expensive cosmetics in Minkyuai City. Where does Lu think the nearest place to sell them is? Lu said it's Anhua City, Jian said the correct answer. They might not have bought them there though, so Lu has to go there and find the clues. Now have him repeat what he told him before. What's the purpose of their investigation? Lu said. If possible, to make a profit but if not, to remain vigilant. Then Jiang found the coins and asked Lu where the coins were from. Lu said it was from the Anhu region. From the looks of it, these must be from Beishan City. Jiang asked Lu, did he figure out their route from the island to here? Lu said yes, they had to go through the Wusong Passage. Jiang told him to hide the coin, and at the same time said why. Lu said that they shouldn't use hometown coins to buy things outside the hometown. And then Jiang pulled out a portrait and said what kind of freak is this, but it looks very familiar to him. Lu asked, were they looking for him? Jiang said that they were amateurs. They should have burned the painting after viewing it. And then the system gave him a special attribute. The system is so generous this time, Jiang says that's all for today. He can see that Lu already likes these beasts. And breathing like unexpectedly, didn't get caught. Breathing points are very useful in recovery. You can even regain physical strength with this technique, Lu said, admitting that he desperately wanted to fight them. Jiang thought for a moment and gave him permission. Jiang told the beasts that one of them would fight Lu. If he won, he could leave here unharmed. Jiang was surprised that the beasts had reached the second level but hadn't learned to recognize speech yet. Just then, the beasts got angry and started swearing. Jiang told them to shut up. Jiang told Lu and one beast to fight among themselves. Lu told his older brother that he scared the beast completely. Would he be able to fight him at full strength? Lu said he's too tough. Jiang said if he doesn't defeat him, he will kill him right here. And then the beast turned into a monster. And Jiang said it was a great spirit. And ordered him to kill Lu. Lu told the older man to stop, and not to anger this beast even more. Jiang looked at him and smiled. And then they stood against each other, and Jiang said to let the fight begin. And then the beast attacked him and Lu managed to dodge. Lu didn't start to run away and taking a stand said the beast attacked. And decided to attack in return. Lu sent a few arrows at it. And the beast started growling and got more angry. Lu saw that it was a form of energy concealment his older brother had taught him. Very useful. Jiang said that in battle, a cultivator would release a mystical pneuma in every movement. The opponent, by watching it, can predict future actions. The energy concealment formula would mask the Numa, and the opponent would have no advantage. Lu remembered that the sword that Big Brother made was really cool. Even a level 2 beast couldn't resist it. Jiang asked, and that's all the first disciple in the region could do? Just then, the beast attacked Lu, and the guy saw that his business was not good. Lu drank the pill and went straight for his sword. Just then, he saw that a third beast had appeared. It's too late to dodge, it's too strong. Jian saw that Lu's affairs were bad and stood up for him, stopping the beast with his hands. He asked Lu, was he scared? But then the beasts all gathered and Jiang told them to calm down and wait. Lu thanked his brother. Jiang told Lu that he still had room to grow. Looking at the beast said that he was brave too. He thought the beast would hide behind a rock all the time. The beast began to snarl and Jiang told him to calm down 
or he might tear his favorite clothes. Jiang couldn't help himself and punched him, and told the beast to just stand still. But the beast started growling, and Jiang said that it was very defiant. Red Mystic Numa, Jiang calmed down and said that he would give the beast a chance to attack him with all his might. And then the beast obeyed him and stepped back. The beast gained strength and attacked, but Jiang saw this and slapped his hand. Jiang told Lu that he had said he wished to ride a special beast. How about this? Lu said he would like to, but he could hardly control it. And then the beast pounced again and got a slap from the guy. Jiang said that was okay, let Lu just keep trying to tame him. So Jiang stood in front of the beast and asked what he would do to him. The beast moved back to the tree and started scratching it. Lu said that it seems that although he doesn't want to give up, he knows he can't win. Doesn't know what to do and is going crazy. Jiang asked Lu, does he want it or not? Red Numa is unique, it has great potential. Lu said of course he wants it, but he won't be able to control it if he's not around. Jiang said he would have to train him properly then. And then Jiang walked up to him and said that he wouldn't hit him. The beast tried to run away, but Jiang told it to stand still. It wouldn't be able to run far anyway. Jian kindly told the beast that he could see that the beast understood his speech. Let us shake hands with each other. They shook hands and Jiang said the animal is a good boy. Jiang told Lu that he was watching. Let him keep fighting. After five minutes, Lu was exhausted and was able to overpower the beast. Jiang said that he had won. Lu said through sweat that it was very difficult. He had disappointed him. Jiang said okay. He had defeated a beast a level above his own, but also made a few mistakes in the process. Let him keep practicing when he comes back. Jiang told him to rest here for a while. His wounds need to stabilize. This energy harvesting pill will protect his heart. Jiang looked at the beast who was lying down and resting. He said that the beast had also fought well and praised it. Jiang looked at it and said that the mystical fire essence in the bodies of Xian beasts is a marvelous material. It's a pity that it's too weak to condense. Jiang asked the beast if the heavenly thunder flower had bloomed. The beast walked up to him and showed him with its paw. Jiang looked at it and understood that this flower could gather the energy of heavenly lightning. If one were to make pills from it, after taking it, one could not only gain thunder resistance, but also thunder power in their attacks. Jiang relented and said he would wait a little longer before they recovered and it's barbecue time. And then Lu sensed that his older brother Jiang was cooking something. And in a moment, the beasts gathered and drooled. Jiang said that the meat of the soul-eating beast was really delicious. But Jiang didn't share it with anyone and ate it alone. Lu said that the food prepared by his brother was definitely the best in the world. And then Jiang looked at the flower and saw that it was almost ready. And then he almost forgot and told the beast to open its mouth and Jiang fed it a pill. Jiang told him that he had taken a month's worth of death pills that didn't work right away. After ten days, his pneuma would rebel and tear him apart. If his body is strong enough, he can survive this condition. But he'll still be dead in a month. Just then, the beast started growling at him. Jiang told him not to worry, there is an antidote. As long as he came to this forest once a month, he would give it to him. Lu asked, who is he? Jiang smiled and said, who else but him? Let the beast take the antidote seventeen or eighteen times, and the poison will dissipate. In the meantime, let's go check on the thunder flower, and they all walked towards the flower. When Lu saw it, he said he could feel its power even from here. Jiang looked at the flower with a glare and told everyone to retreat immediately. Just then, the system said that the task was completed. Just then, Jiang saw the smoke above and recognized it as the heavenly tribulation. Damn it! Awesome this flower is really unique, but the lightning bolts from this flower never stopped. Yi Jiang said that this spiritual flower was going through the ninth level thunder tribulation. Jiang told Lu to get rid of the bodies, and the Bart would be here soon. He told the beasts to help him too. Putting on his gloves, Jiang said that of course— such crazy and bright thunder would definitely attract someone's attention. This flower is truly extraordinary. It has completely absorbed the power of thunderous grief and was able to digest it. And then Jiang had accomplished everything and it was time for them to go back. He said, The beast could go too. They were free to go. Jiang approached the beast and told it to remember to come here once a month and said goodbye to them. Lu told his older brother that it was all they had. 
Jiang said the weapons and medicine were worth something. We'll take them with us and see how to sell them, and then they started running home. Lu started lagging behind and asked his brother to wait for him. Jiang asked why his speed didn't improve at all. Lu said no, he practiced very hard, it's just that Jiang is too fast. Jiang asked him if he was sure. Lu said he was right. Lu himself is too slow. He will train hard in cloud movements. Here they got to the sect, and here Jiang didn't have time to go back, and the system immediately offered him a task. Jiang told Lu to go back to the mountain alone, while he went around it and took care of some business. Jiang told him that the white bottle contained the antidote, and the gray and blue bottles contained the special beasts. Now it's up to him to tame the blood shadow beast. Lu thanked him and asked Jian, was he going to leave him alone, alone with that beast? Jiang asked him, is he afraid? Lu said that he can't win if he gets angry at him. Jiang said not to pretend. Lu said he promises that he will conquer him. Jiang said that's more like the truth. Lu told Jian that here is the material he asked him to find last time. But he is still waiting for news about silver bone or in other kinds. Jiang said fine. But why didn't he give him all of them at once? Lu said that after the battle with the Thunder Beast, he felt a breakthrough coming, so he planned to enter closed cultivation for a while. It seemed to him that he might need them during this period, so here you go. Jiang said that he had wised up. Then go report your business first and come back. Lu saw that his older brother is musty, respectful, and indifferent to fame and fortune. The standard of what he wants to be, arriving at the back mountain, Jiang was surprised and couldn't believe it. Could it be that this thunder flower was still summoning lightning? But then he said to stop by. There's no rush. There'll be a better place later. But then Lu came running in, to his brother. Jiang said what was he doing so fast, and had he done everything? Lu said he had done everything. After arriving at the place, Jiang began to lay everything out and build his magic map for cultivation. Lu walked in and marveled that a Bart could set up this array and even with such priceless talismans. It looks like it's specially prepared for his breakthrough. He's very touched. I swear I'll be loyal to him until the day I die. Jiang told him to cut the crap and sat down next to him. Jiang told him to activate his energy. Jiang saw that the array was complete, and said that the rest was up to him. Just then, Lu thanked him. Lu realized that he couldn't let his big brother down this time and would definitely break through. Jiang went outside and saw a crowd of people gathered. Jiang was surprised and asked what was wrong. Jiang asked the guy why there were so many people here. The guy said that he had come to play chess with the representatives from the Blue Hard Hall. Jiang said that in the five years he had been here, he had never imagined that there were so many people who loved chess. The boy said that there were more and more of them thanks to the efforts of the Blue Heart Hall and the Mirror Hall. Jiang watched and thought, don't they need to practice? What kind of master, what kind of students? There's no control at all. Sooner or later, the Heartbreaker sect will fall apart because of this. Yi Jiang headed to his house and found a note he said it seems Yi Young sent him her work to criticize, and then he rejoiced that the letter was from Lu's older brother. Jiang slammed the door and walked out. Jiang came to the Hall of the Flying Feather. And then he knocked and asked, Who is there? Jiang said he was the one who came. The guy opened the door and saw Jian and said he was back. Jiang said that he welcomed Lu's older brother. Lu said that he had heard about his cooperation with the Water Mirror Hall. There were many more people in the Blue Hard Hall. Jiang asked, Was he looking for him? Lu said a little embarrassed, but he had used up all the flavor pills he had given him earlier. I'm afraid because he couldn't find replacements. Once again he asked to bring them. Jiang told him not to be shy. Here, keep the two bottles for now. He'll bring more later. Lu said that it's not worth it. It's enough. He can't just accept them. This is the mental cultivation method he accidentally found. Take it with you and read it quietly. Maybe it will suit him. Lu said that he would soon enter closed cultivation. If he needed anything, he could find Big Brother Ku. Jiang asked him, was he going to break through? Lu said not really, he had learned something new about the cultivation method and wanted to quietly practice for a while. Jiang said that in that case, he wished him good luck. After this close cultivation, he would be very close to a breakthrough. He should make preparations beforehand. Needing the phoenix flower, he would try to look for it in the mirror hall. That same day he went there and Madame Sher was told she had a visitor. 
The girl said no, it's the guard's chaotic star hall, Tang, sure said for the servant to say that she was out. The servant said that senior you said that if the elders from other halls came to see them, they should meet them out of courtesy. Sure said he could come in, sure asked the guard Tang what brought him here. Tang said that the hall leader sent him to discuss something important with them. Sure said maybe it's the head of Lee so wants to team up with them. Tang said that was true. He came for that. She said he came today for nothing. They are not going to unite with any of the halls for now. Tang said for them to listen to his proposal first. She said she didn't need to. She has already heard many suggestions. But he is not going to team up with anyone. The servant said that guard you would be very proud of her if she saw the current performance. Sure said that she was tired. Why hasn't Jiang still come to see her? She wants fish. Duo said that big brother Jiang said that he was very busy. Just then, Sure ran out and met Jian. Sure asked him why he didn't come to play with her yesterday. Jiang said that he told Duo that he had to leave on business. She said whatever. He told Duo, not her. He has to play with her for the rest of the afternoon and make it up to her. Jiang said no problem but he needs to take care of the flowers first. She said no, let him play first. And Duo was already watering them in the morning. Jiang said no, straight to business. They had an agreement. Jiang thought that it looks like these precious and delicate flowers will soon be ready for pollination. How troublesome. None of them can be propagated by cuttings. Sure asked him if he was done. Jiang said yes, and by the way, he brought a new toy. Sure told him to tell him about it. Jiang told Duo to come over too, the three of them would be more fun. Sure said these are precision work, did Jiang carve them himself? Jiang said yes, if you like it, he can send some over. Shei said she really liked it. And asked what is the name of the game. Jiang said it's heroes and exploits. Just then, Yui came in and got angry that she had been plowing like a horse all day, and she dared to have fun. Wait ka! It's Duo's voice. She felt like she should be guiding Madam in the right direction. How come Duo was now playing with them together? Yui burst into the room and asked what was the game this time? Duo said she was welcoming her. Yui asked how could she join them? Jiang said, why doesn't she join them? There was just one person missing. You asked Jian if he had become braver. Jiang said that it was called Heroes and Feats, a game from Fu's Jerian. Yui saw that Madam has been giving up her bad habits lately. She stopped putting tattoos on her body, and the opium pipe is gone too. Dresses less provocatively. Sure told Yui to let her finish this route. Yui said giving her permission. Sure tuned in and said that she could always count on her. Come on, duo, roll the dice. She can't escape. She said she needed a six and the hero would finally fly away. She shouted that number very loudly. After an hour... Sure said she won and put a piece of paper on Jiang's head. Jiang said he was surprised that she was so good at this game. She said that she was talented at everything. He only won last time because of her pity. Jiang said she was really smart. Sure told them to play one more time. But then Yui got angry and sure told her to calm down. Jiang said he should go already. He wasn't done with his business for the day yet. Sure said to then make sure he comes tomorrow morning. Jiang said he didn't promise but he would try. Just then, you caught up with him and thanked him for trying so hard these past few days. Jiang said that he was just entertaining Madame Shi. Yui said she could clearly see if he was entertaining her or trying to help her. Does he think any random person can entertain the head of their gala so easily? You asked if Jiang knew why she allowed him to stay by the leader's side. Jiang said he didn't care. Yui asked him why he refused to discuss it with her. Jiang said not to let her make things difficult for him. He feels it's too dangerous and doesn't want to be involved. Jiang thought, if it wasn't for the spiritual fruit he would have run away. In any case, the system didn't offer assignments when he helped her with her bad habits, so it didn't matter. He also helped with his daughter's upbringing. Doesn't he owe him a favor? So now he has the support of another powerful figure? You said that Head Jiang asked her to tell her to tell him to stop by and see him. Jian thanked and said see you later. Jiang came to the Purple Garden the Hall of the Blue Heart. He asked the head, did he want to see him? The master told Jiang that it was so difficult to meet him. Jiang said so that there would be no misunderstandings, he would tell him the truth. Jiang said that for the sake of their alliance with the water mirror, he made a promise to Madame Sher. To constantly take care of her flowers and plants, 
that's why. Master said not to be so serious. He was just joking. He always appreciated his contribution to their hall. Master said that it must have been hard for Jian these days. Let them drink some tea together. Master said that he had summoned him for a matter. Recently, the moon sect head had finally broken through to the black phase stage and emerged from his closed cultivation. By the way, it's his hundredth birthday. So, he decided to have a lavish feast and invited all the smaller sects to it. Jian realized that the most important step to become a super cultivator. I'm afraid that the status of the moon sect will soon rise very high. Jian asked, what could he do to help them? Master said that the feast in this case would not be as important as the condition of the young talents. Fighting between the elders is not appropriate, so they decided to watch the younger generation compete vividly. And he knows what Jiang is thinking, but these competitions aren't just fighting competitions. In addition to the military, they will include competitions in music, drawing and chess. The sect with the highest score will win, and to show their strength, the Moon sect has prepared a big reward for the winners. Unlike many people, he knows that Jiang is the best at chess in the Zhangbei region, and even in the entire state of Feng. And he wants Jiang to participate in chess competitions on behalf of their sect. But then Jiang saw that it was nothing. It had been a long time since the black phase for refusal. If he refuses, will the sect be destroyed? The Moon sect is preparing a trap, Jiang said yes. The sect has been training him for years and he must do his best to repay it. Master said he was so surprised and lost control of his emotions. He always seemed to be too proud and disrespectful of his elders. Jiang asked him not to talk about bad things. And just praise him. Master said that it seems like he misunderstood him before, and he actually considers the sect as a home. Jiang said of course, without the sect, he would have died by now. So would do anything for her. Master said very pleased to hear such a thing. The competition will be held in the middle of September. Despite his success, keep practicing chess. Jiang thought to himself, he has two months left. We need to prepare well. Judging by the rewards, I'm afraid that will activate more difficult variants of the task if he's not serious. In the water mirror room, all the guys gathered outside and asked for the list of participants and someone was surprised that they were not there. At night, Chiu thanked Jian for saving her in Luoxia City, and may he accept this humble gift from her. Just then there was a knock on her door, and Chiu asked who is there. Qin asked her, is she still awake? Chiu said she was awake. Qin said that she couldn't sleep, so she took a cookie and decided to come over to chat with her. Not bothering you. Chiu told her not to talk nonsense, of course not. Qin said for her to try, she made them herself. Chiu asked Qin, did she specifically come to comfort her? The Water Mirror Hall published a list of the contestants in the competition. They are all on the list except for her. Qin said that she plays the zither perfectly. Otherwise, Guardian, you won't come and teach her. She is really talented. Chiu said don't console her. In fact, she actually likes practicing martial arts more. But now she's confused and she really wants to ask Jiang about this dream. What will he say about it? Jiang came to the flower pavilion the next day, and Madame Shi ran out screaming with joy when she saw him. Shi told Jiang that she found out something interesting. Does he want to hear it? Jiang said no, he doesn't want to. Shi told him to tell him what he wants to hear. Jiang said if she's going to tell, then he's leaving. But here Yui was telling her not to or else he would really leave. You said that everyone has their own beliefs. Right, Jiang? Sure said it's just good news. She asked him where he was going. Then, let them play something better. And then Yui told her not to fool around. She told him to get the game out. I'm sure she'll win today. Jiang said he had some business to take care of first. Sure begged him to let them play first. Just then, you walked in, and Sure said that they had just started. You asked Jian, did he agree to go to the competition held by the moon sect? Jiang said he agreed. You asked him why, why did he suddenly agree? Jiang said that as a member of the sect, it's his duty to protect his part of it. Yui said that if someone else had said that, she wouldn't have believed it. But him, he never took the initiative unless the sect was on the brink of disaster. Jiang said that she was wrong about him. He refuses to participate anywhere just because he is too weak. But now it's about chess, which he is confident in. Sure said that he's definitely going to participate in the junior competition. 
It's really too dangerous with his physique. Does she want to give him a weapon for self-defense? Jian looked at the system and thought, What's wrong? This time, the choice should somehow affect the competition. But if he chose the safe option, everything would be fine. Jiang told her that he would be grateful for the weapon he had been given. Yui thought and never understood the course of his thoughts. Sure asked, Does he want to get a gun? Let him make her happy first then. Immediately, Yui coughed. Sure said, How about this? If he can show her a more interesting way of this game, she will give him a marvelous weapon. Jiang said they had a deal. She says it's time to start, but first she's going to show him how easy it is to win. First round to start. Leaving Yui told Jiang to stop coming to play and spoil the madam. Jiang said he understood her. Coming home in the evening, Jiang picked up the book and never thought that there was such a mental cultivation method. It said that it could absorb spiritual energy from everything and channel it into the body in the form of mystic energy, until it completely restructures the body to the point where it automatically absorbs spiritual energy or produces it on its own. Senior brother Lu knew that the sex techniques weren't suitable for him, and had purposely found something completely different. So, he believes that a technique different from the sex techniques will allow him to break through he is the one he respects the most. And then Jiang started to hear sounds in the room and thought, if it's not knocking but throwing stones at the door, then it's Lin coming. Opening the door, he saw a girl. She said hello to him and asked if he knew the Lunar Sex Junior Sex Competition. Jiang thought that it seems like the topic of competition is the hottest topic in the sect. The girl said that their leader advised them to pay special attention to it. In addition to the martial competition, she will also take part in calligraphy. It's hard for her to ask for it, but can't Jiang teach her? Jiang didn't understand what was wrong with the system. Why saying no to her wasn't the safest option? It seems like it would be an extremely dangerous event. It would be worth being extremely careful. Jiang asked her what she was going to pay with. The girl was surprised that he didn't refuse to help. Besides, he gave such a verbose answer. The girl said that she promises that she will give a reward that is sure to satisfy him, but might give some time to think of better options. Jiang didn't talk to her anymore, and threw a note right into her hands. The girl said she would be on time. The girl thought it was a date, and afterward they promised to love each other. Or will he propose to her? Then what kind of dowry should she prepare? But daddy might not agree. The girl put the fact that his father would be okay with their marriage. And eventually he would agree. The next morning, Jiang headed to the mirror hall. And on the way, he met Duo who was cleaning the courtyard. Jiang asked you, is she having guests? Yui said yes, it's a disciple from the Red Cloud sect. So he headed towards the flowers and thought about that sect. Sure said that she wanted to send a reliable disciple back with her. But he's busy. Even she... The head of the hall can't demand that of him. The girl said there was no need for formalities. It's not the first time she's been back, so there's no need for security. Jiang saw her and thought that this lady was the reason for the black phase level reward. She saw Jian and told the girl that they would end it there then. The girl thanked her for her concern and said she was leaving. She asked Jian, he's sorry, right? She wanted to send him back with Xiu Yang. She was the one who left now but he refused to listen to her good news earlier. Jiang thanked her for her concern. He was just unlucky. He never wants to get involved with such a beautiful and dangerous person. She read the game that they encountered some brigands from the evil sect, and they took all the silver. And then she said, how dare they? Her chain fairy is so strong, she can easily defeat them. Jiang said, rules are rules, there's no way without them. She asked, can they take less money? Jiang said, no, no option. Do they continue or not? Sure didn't resist for a long time and agreed with him. And then Yui walked in and asked, Are they playing games again? Jiang stood up and greeted her. Yui asked him, Where does he get these games from? Where do so many new ideas come from? Jiang said it's an improved version of heroes and feats. You can call it a journey into the world of martial arts. She said it was for him. She promised to give him a weapon. Let him look at her and then Jiang thanked her for it. Upon seeing it, Jiang realized that it was cloud armor, as thin as the wings of a cicada, but it had excellent defense. It needs the tail feathers of a level 5 special beast and an experienced black phase tailor master with special techniques. Jiang asked her what is it? Shur said that it was called the Bonia of Heavenly Feathers. 
the defense equipment of the Black Phase. Jiang didn't understand what the strange name was. After all, it was called Cloud Armor. Maybe she didn't like the name and changed it. Sure said that unfortunately she can only lend to him. Jiang said that even if she said she was giving it to him, he wouldn't accept it. He's really grateful that she could lend it to him for the duration of the competition. Sure said that the power of this weapon depends on the strength of the wearer. I'm afraid that with his strength, it will only be able to display 10% of its full power. Even so, it would be very hard for anyone with nothing black phase to wound it. She said he could go back inside, but tell him to remember to come here tomorrow morning. Jiang decided to go to Anliang village, and immediately a girl met him and greeted him. The girl said she is very grateful that he came. It boosts her confidence a lot in competitions. Jiang said that in truth, her calligraphy is at a good level and he doesn't know what she can learn from him. The girl was glad he had spoken, so many words at one time to praise her. If this is a dream, she doesn't want to wake up, the girl said he praises her. She thinks his calligraphy is better. Jiang said she shouldn't be modest, did she bring her work? Jiang took them and said that italicized writing was not bad. When he got points in calligraphy, he could now repeat almost anything he had seen before. It will certainly be a good idea to try to spread the elegant writing style to the world. The girl saw it and said it was very unusual, elegant, free and unrestrained. His calligraphy is really unique. Two hours later they were finished, and the girl thanked him for his enlightenment. This table mirror is called a circulatory mirror. It can absorb the poison contained in an opponent's blows or weapons. Jian knew that only a few people on this continent could use poison. A unique family treasure but since there's no message from the system, one can take it freely. Jian said thank you and offered to call it a day. Let her remember that they need to go back in different ways. This is where she got excited that this was their first date spot. She would go back and rewrite this calligraphy 800 times. 